Hello and a warm welcome to day two of the Rate Call EMS 1 finals. And uh, once more, I'm joined by Pyrion. Thank you. <laughs> Took me the whole night to get his nickname right and not call him Pylon anymore. A pleasure to be yeah, here. Isn't yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? And uh, we, of course, have three teams who came through after amazing games yesterday. We have Rocks Kiss, Mouse Sports, Navi, and also Absolute Legends. And first match we're going to see today is going to be Absolute Legends against Rocks Kiss. Yeah, can't wait. Really looking forward to this one. Yeah. <laughs> Are you yeah. keeping it short, man? <laughs> well, Nothing, they, no, nothing's been played yet. I'm looking forward to. I'm That's really looking true. forward to seeing them because I mean, Rock's Kiss, as we saw yesterday, a lot of sort of uh, action play, a lot of flair. So it should be good to see them. Yeah, definitely will be. And before we head into all of that action, we're going to throw it over to our casters once more: Kaba and Toby One. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Zoe. It's always good to linger. Hi, I'm Toby One, and joining me is Kawa. We are here, of course, for our last day of the Raycall EMS One yeah, Spring man. Finals. Should be some fun games today. Obviously, it definitely should be. We're here for the semi-finals as well as the grand final. And, uh, of course, first semi-final of our day, man, Roskiss, coming up against Absolute Legends. Roskiss, yeah. man, they were really impressive yesterday. They were really impressive. They seriously were. It was really enjoyable watching them. In particular... Probably one of my favorite heroes in general going to be that clockwork. And what we saw yesterday in that game, Miguel going absolutely insane mm -hmm. with that. I think he was most likely the MVP in that one going 15-1 and one, and just creating so much room for Unicorn to be able to just carry the game so, so easily. So really, really enjoying that and going to be looking forward to that next game coming up now as I press the start game button. That's always a good thing to do. So let's get up ourselves inside the game. Of course, people at home, make sure you get on those Twitters and Facebook. Hashtag out. I don't know what you want to hashtag. We may find something to try and trend later on. Yeah. Uh, but for now, <laughs> make sure you tweet out the stream link and get everybody over there right now. Of course, you can go over to the Raycall website. That's raycall-ems1.com. And you better put in your bets because we didn't check those today. But on the bright side, uh, we will be uh, checking those later on today. See who really thinks who's going to win from this one. Of course, mm -hmm. most people, when we checked this last night, Rocks Kissed were well in front. A lot of people like... They, they they performed so well yesterday, Absolute Legends. They've always been this kind of like slightly unstable team because there's Absolute yeah. Stand-In. They are, of course, like together. They're really focused. I was over there with the boys before. Yeah. Um, not trying to interfere with what they're doing, but just they're like analyze, analyzing the replays. They're prepared for Rock's Kiss and they're good and ready to go. Yeah, yeah. And just speaking to that too, well, I, yeah, I would also call it a little bit unstable because they really have been, and we were talking about it earlier mm. uh, yesterday about how they've been playing with so many stand-ins. Like, I believe the list was like Cinderin, Jolene, Pusher, Street, Calculus, Funzy. The list like goes on and on yep. because just, yeah, having to deal with that. So we got the game started going on now. The band's yeah. just starting. Hopefully we'll be able to jump into the game right now and check that out. That's a good thing to do, man. So let's jump ourselves into the draft and we'll see how our teams will progress through this one. Of course, we always look for... Oh, wait, we're not going to do that just yet. Well, I don't know why the game has already started then, because the captains are standing right over there with Zoe as well as Perian flags. <laughs> and we're like, okay, sweet. Zoe, it is all yours. <laughs> Yeah, Toby just can't wait to get that game going. He doesn't even want to wait for the players anymore. But we do indeed have two representatives of each of those teams here standing with us. And uh, we stole them away for a few seconds before it actually going to start. Miracle, uh, what do you expect from this game? Do you think it's going to be an easy time or easy time uh, like you had yesterday with the 2-0 convincing win there? You think it's going to happen again? No, I think it will be very hard. They are very good at disrupting the opponents, so... But we're well prepared. I think we will do well. All right. So. Okay, and I'm here with <laughs> with Yol from Rock's Kiss. Uh, you confident ahead of today's game? Uh, I think uh, this game will be harder than with DD, but we prepared well. I think uh, we could manage to win. Okay, so you got a strategy going into the game, or are you going to keep that a secret? Of course, we have. Yeah, you're going to keep it secret. Uh, I won't tell you. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. That's I understand. So odd. Yeah, strange. Never mind. Okay, well, thanks very much and good luck. <laughs> okay, so we have two well-prepared teams. We're going to see which one actually will take it. Once more, it's going to be played in a best of three up for grabs. Overall prize pool of $35,000, of which 12000 are going to the winner. And I think we're all ready for that game. So let's get it on the way. <laughs>
Raid Call. Communication for winners. Welcome back, everybody, here to your casting desk for what is now going to be there we go. our draft. Uh, I am Toby One, joined by Kawa for what is our game number one of the first semi final for the day. Of course, it is finals day today. We want to see who is going to be the victor of this first Raycall EMS One Spring Finals. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it as well. Predictions? What do you? Who do you think is going to be taking away this one right Predictions, now? Predictions? You know what? I like. I love all the guys from Absolute Legends. Mm -hmm. I really hope they manage to take this out. I hope they also give us three games and take it two one. But if I'm going to go with logic, I'd actually say Roskis would probably take this out two nil. Yeah, pretty pretty strong. We were talking about it right before we went to that interview, just about how stable, more stable the lineup is right now for Rock's Kiss. So jumping into the game right now, we're already going to be checking out the bands. We've got already Darkseer is going to be here along with Nyx, taken out for Rock's Kiss, as well as the Wisp and Coddle. Of course. Legends. Do you see what we get for the first time in this entire competition? He finally <laughs> manages to get through the pool. So uh, welcome in the Batrider in towards the mix. And of course, this is such a frustrating hero to play against. Such a frustrating hero to play against. Seriously, just having to deal with him in the mid lane most likely is what we're going to be seeing here so far, judging by how... The heroes have been picked up right now. Batrider going to be able to make it absolutely annoying in the middle with that turn radius just being slowed down ridiculously. Also, you're going to be matched up with the Lifestealer to be able to just bomb in as well mm -hmm. as he uses that as the initiation. Followed also with the Rubik to be able to just kind of make it even more annoying. For Absolute Legends to try to get anything off continuously, going to be getting that level 6 and just disrupting all that. And then also for Absolute Legends, we've got Shadow Demon gyrocopter as well as the clockwork and I was mentioning it before clockwork probably one of my favorites just for taking out the flow as well crowd control is going to be absolutely insane for absolute mm -hmm. legends with that and after the performance that they had with Miguel in that previous game yesterday going to be looking really really nice yeah I'm looking forward to seeing also where they're going to land because if I remember correctly AL to put that in the middle lane solo yeah it was it was a very like uh, draft specific kind of pickup it worked mm -hmm. nicely up against the mid solo obviously in this scenario that cannot work you're going to have bat rider Possibly in the mid solo, of course, Batrider. He keeps getting picked up, but he never always gets locked in the mid solo. Most of the no. time, he's actually on the off lane. Yeah, I've been seeing that a lot more frequently. Also, jungling has been an option as well. It's going to be hard to tell in the meantime, though, as we're going to have to wait for the next oncoming picks as we start off the next portion of the ban right here. Chen going to be eliminated also right now for Rock's Kiss. Yeah, so they're, they're... Actually, I'm wondering if they're just worried about like a very, very stagnant style of game. Because they're not worried about pushing power. Like you got SD Gyro as well as Clockwork. And the pushing power from that one is, isn't really there. You're looking mm -mm. at nuking out creep waves. Yeah. You're looking at engagement from the Clockwork. And then you get your power through that. And it's through the ganking and the team fight control right now, which Absolute Legends really excels at. Yeah. And then Rock's Kiss, they've got Initiation, which will come from the Nakes Bomb inside the Bat Rider. Then you're going to have a Rubik as well who will sit on the back. And he'll be that, like, that supporting kind of control from the edge of the fight. And then what else are you going to get from that one? It's strong lanes already. Both mm -hmm. teams already have some really good elements of team fight, which means we get to see the, the kind of dough that we really enjoy. Yeah. And that's, let's see if everyone can kill each other, and it's all based <laughs> on skill. Exactly. And Rox is also going in for most of their ganks, or just kind of team fights. With all five, they heavily, heavily commit to each one of those, especially early. So really, if they aren't able to get a successful gank off with that entire team, they lose quite a bit of experience because Absolute Legends does like to keep their carries just kind of farming safe as the rest of the other heroes, the other four, are going to be just trying to engage in those team fights. So going to have to be wary of that in particular. Also, who's still inside of the lineup right now is the Magnus. Magnus is still there. It's kind of true. Yeah, Magnus being completely ignored for this first stage. Yeah. But I don't see Magnus really being played up by Absolute Legends, because if they're going to play it, they'll, they'll want to play it in the middle lane. And up against a Batrider, this is just something which you never really want to find yourself in a position of. Like, you can skewer yourself away, but the Sticky Napalm is still going to remain, and you're still going to be really slowed up. Oh, and yeah. Batrider will just firefly and chase you. So even, like, skewering up cliffs, it doesn't face Batrider at all. He'll just chase you out. And most of the time, too, if you're looking at the timing of your skewer, mm -hmm. Flame Break, a big repositioner. Of course, the old Flame Break, which was like a projectile kind of thing, when it hit something, then it blew everything up. Yeah. Like, back in those days, and you wouldn't really care, but the flame break, the way it works, you put it out to a spot and you can push targets back towards you, mm -hmm. and that is even, like, I'm talking about team fight control from Absolute Legends. You throw a flame break into a team fight, 
I mean, it's, anyone... It's, ba- it's basically split completely. Yeah, and then Clockwork, when he's going to be able to try and latch onto people with the cogs, being able to push them out of it with that flame break, that's going to be an option as well. They will still get hit, obviously, by the cogs, but, you yeah. know, in that case, that's going to be pretty nice for Roxas to be able to just disrupt that initi- initiation coming out here for Clockwork. And the next pickup actually going to be Lestrac yeah, for Rox. We're, we're, we're now just working on, on the tri lane. We're just working on the tri lane. You notice, too, that Bane has not been selected either uh, from Absolute Legends. They don't want to because they've already got one set up stunner. They want a follow up stunner, and the Lashrak Shra- would have been a nice pickup. Of course, we have been seeing like the Lashrak and the Lina being the most popular ones to combine up with like the SDs or the Rubik's or whatever. So, in this scenario, Rubik and Lashrak already up for Rock's Kiss. That gives them an aggressive combination, too. Doesn't always have to rely on the Rubik as well for Lashrak to get that stun. Obviously, you can attempt it yourself, yeah. but with the casting animation time, you're always looking for that sub, so you can guarantee you're going to get that hit and open wounds will do that for you the slow is enough that the can get the stun and then if you're able to get those kills if it is going to be rocks because running an aggressive tri lane then you're looking at towers also going down for the track able to stay alive even one point in edict of course i think if actually rocks kiss ran a lashrak yesterday if i remember correctly and uh they actually ran lightning build on it there was at least there was at least a lashrak yesterday that didn't even go a single point in edict until like level seven level eight yeah he'd really need to make space for himself especially since the other team had to like kind of go right up into you. And with that in particular, with when you're Lashrak, trying to go for an Edict build when the enemy team has so much burst damage in front of you, you gotta like mm-hmm. create space for yourself. So the nukage of the Lightning ov- obviously gonna be extremely, extremely powerful. And right now, Absolute Legends getting one of their signature hard carries is going to be actually the Faceless Void. That it is. And of course, it's a really great pickup as well for your safe lane. You realize Roskis, it really reeks of aggressive lane. So what do you wanna do? SD's already a nice little backup. You can disrupt if things go wrong. Mm-hmm. But Void, a good farmer, can stay on the front lines. Sometimes backtrack chance can really help you out. But more importantly, you got that time walk and then jump yourself away. Everyone gets slowed that's going to go through that path. So chasing a faceless Void is very, very difficult to do, which means then they've got to focus on killing off the SD, which really Rock's kids are already going to do. Because yeah. he's, he's the guy that's going to save people. He really is, and once he kind of gets nuked down by that, just speaking to Lashrak's Lightning, obviously going to easily be able to take him out. What's great for Roxkis, though, is going to be able to pick up that Rubik to be able to steal the Chrono. Obviously going to be such, such a good spell to just kind of interrupt the rest of the follow-up that's going to be coming out from the Absolute Legends lineup. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, that's going to be super, super good here for Rox. And the final pickup for them is going to be the Queen of Pain, obviously going to be Played in the mid, I believe. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be middle lane. Yeah. It'll be middle lane. So Ross Kiss, they, they've already made what they're doing very, very obvious. And Absolute Legends, they don't really have great matchups against this. They really, mm-hmm. really don't. Like, you're looking at a lineup right now. You've got Queen of Pain, who is a fantastic laner. Absolutely fantastic laner. With that pickup, AL might think about going the mag now because, well, it's still going to be Queen of Pain up against a mag, but it's at least better than having a Bat Rider up against a mag. Yeah. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that. <laughs> um, and then Bat Rider, safe lane top. And that's up against Clockwork Goblin. Clockwork is going to get nothing out of this one. Batrider will try and initiate, and the cogs will save Clockwork's life. But he will getting last hits can be very, very difficult. They have to pull a lot of consumables to him, go up there with a stout shield, and he's going to have to do it tough. Like, really, really tough on that top lane. And because he's going to be doing, doing it tough, it's going to take a very, very long time before he gets even, like, Arcanes or any kind of, like, the next, uh, next set of treads up and running. Mm-hmm. And then Mania is like, well, what do we pick up for the last one? We want to run Void and SD on the bottom lane. Do we just say we try and win this tri lane? And that's what carries us through. If that's the case, then they need something like a Lena. They need some good damage dealing. Because then they need to actually kill off Rock's Kiss when they run the aggressive tri lane, not just sit back and farm. Because I'm really feeling like that mid lane and the top lane of Absolute Legends is very, very weak right now. And yeah, they do, yeah. They do actually go the mag. They do actually go the mag. Yeah, that's going to be Miguel picking him up. So that's going to be... Very, very decent to watch. Obviously, we're going to be seeing Mania actually playing the offline here for Clockwork. So, nothing too crazy out of the ordinary there. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting game, man. I've got to say. Just the AoE that's going to be also coming out from Absolute Legends is going to be great. But honestly, when you've got the kind of lineup that Rock's Kiss has, really the push, the team fight is going to be happening extremely early, especially with Dread going to be rotating around during that first night time, picking off mm-hmm. easy heroes like that. Got to be extremely careful of your Miracle as well. Shadow Demon just going to kind of fall 
And so the nukage of Queen of Pain, that's going to be just blinking around. Yeah, if he, if he even gets controlled by a certain, like, just one Latrax done, one Telekinesis, Queen of Pain will take his life. And that's it. Yeah. So let's get ourselves inside the game. So over on the Dire side, Rock's Kiss. Actually, I like this from teams. They keep doing this. Prepare they select a hero, battle. and then they switch themselves around. Both Solo and Dread. Uh, originally, it was Dread who was on the Batrider. It was Solo was, uh, Dread was on the Queen of Pain, Solo was on the Batrider, mm -hmm. which instantly makes you think that then middle lane is, in fact, going to be the Bat Rider, Queen of Pain is going to be the off lane, and then you switch it around. So if you don't double check this kind of stuff, you won't be ready for it. And well, do we still have a have solo, so he's going to be that mid lane solo, Queen of Pain, which means Bat Rider for the off lane. Dread, of course, a fantastic off lane player. He'll have a great time up there on the top lane. Biz to be the number one slot for Rock's Kiss. He's down there as the Nakes, puts Yol onto the supporting Lashrag, and leaves Venscore as the final one, as the very, very like robotic Rubik version. It's as opposed to the Kermit version. Exactly. And already Aww. both teams meeting each other in the jungle here. Yeah, there's a smoke up. Solo is still going to move down here. Rise just around the corner, but they need a stun. They need a disruption. ST's just a little bit too far back there. They arc themselves up here in Rock's Kiss. Unless they commit it in, that was never going to be in a great... That was never going to play. And I like, mm -hmm. too, the fact that Rock's Kiss, they're using the same war that Fnatic <laughs> used up against Na'Vi yesterday. Exactly. And hopefully they will be able to spot that out. But honestly... It's, it's, it's difficult to check. Yeah. It's really difficult to check. Because most of the time when you're searching for a ward, you're searching this box here. Mm -hmm. That's what you normally expect. So you throw down begins. one sentry here, you throw one up here, and that'll reveal everything off. But you've got to clean this tree line off. And like, what have we they actually got? Things. AL have nothing to clean off this tree line. They don't, yeah. There's nothing going to be able to just bring off those trees, honestly. So that's going to be a little bit annoying, unfortunately, for the Absolute Legend side here. Oh, I like this ward too. This is this is another one of my favorite wards for the mm. for the aggressive lane. We are able to see the rune, and just off to the side, you also get some vision just through this line here. Uh, it lets you know if someone's going to be coming from the side. Very very late notice, but it's still there. But more importantly, it blocks this camp that's over on the side here. Very very smart warning here from Rock's Kiss, and this allows them to run their aggressive tri lane man to man style. So all three have to remain on the lane. And you see the sentry wards yet rise. Actually, he works his way through. Oh, he got it. There might, okay, so there is actually a path. You can walk in here and see that ward in the corner. Nice to be able to spot that out. Also, it's actually going to be in the top lane. Mania is going to be the one who's going in the off lane up against Dread, and that's going to be Clockwork in the middle up against Solo. So they're going to give her, they're going to give it a shot. I wish Clockwork all the best of luck. He does have that stout shield, but then Solo, he might just level up Shadow Strike more and more. Like we saw it in in, uh, in yesterday's game with Dendi, like Dendi. He went to the two points up on the Shadow Strike. Yep. Just, just, you, you realize that lane control is so much better. Like you get that ex that extra extra set of points up, you can get the burst damage later. Mm -hmm. And already going into the bottom lane right now, Unicorn being disrupted. Luckily, after a nice stun from the track, he's gonna be able to just back his way off there. But this is what we're talking about. Where you can't initiate, you can't kill off Unicorn. He's the wrong person to go on. Miracle is the one they have to try and kill off. Yeah. Unicorn, they can harass and try and push back off the lane, so we can't get farm. But that's the only thing you you can do. Looks like now Ross Kiss want to try and contest this pull. Centaurs and creeps over on the side. They just cut through with the Quelling Blade. Sentry Wars, they're able to block the camp again as well as do the D warning. The more importantly, it's all the hunt for the Centaur. And uh, actually the boy in yellow was Jaro. Ryze able to, get, able to get that last hit. Just a last second there, yeah. So that is still going to be though the block happening there inside the camp. So still continuing to contest that right now, making it difficult for Absolute Legend. Still going to be able to go through that. And meanwhile, inside of the middle lane, still not being able to tell what Solo's going to be wanting to do. Most likely, like you had mentioned before, the Shadow Strike at level 2 may be something he's going to want to try and consider. But you do also have Miguel picking up that magic stick to be able to try and hopefully live through just those ticks. So, that yeah. is just something to consider. He, he was hoping that, that uh, Batrider would be here. That's what that magic stick is for. It's for the Napalm stacks. And then you're just able to get your full health mana back. Because if that, like, if if Mag was expecting uh, Batrider on top lane, he'll be walking yeah. up there with a stick right now. But he's not, so it changes it around. Radiance they make a bit of a run for the top rune. It's just gonna be a haste rune for yes. Miguel. Actually, he's got Rocket Barrage. Yeah, he actually took Battery Assault. He's got it. If he wants to have a crack here at Solo, he can do so. But he decided not to actually go the whole hog. Mm -mm. He holds it back. The bottle comes in. He goes a little bit safer. Top and this for me, I'm not really sure about because he's got to make the most out of everything. Top lane is completely lost for Absolute Legends. You have a 17 for 3 Bat Rider up here, up against a 9 for, 9 for nil Mag. And he only got 7 of those last hits in the last minute. Mm -hmm. He's only just found some space for that one. At the very least, he's going to be trying to pick up some of that experience inside the mid, though. Miguel nearly getting 
Definitely getting taken out there, but Solo gonna have to back it on up. But yeah, just speaking to that inside of the top lane, yeah, Mania at least gonna be able to pick up that experience, which is good, but no, CS is gonna be going his way. And Dread also picking up his bottle right now inside of his stash. And this is the problem, man. This is the problem which I was saying during the draft. Rock's Kiss lanes are just so much stronger for control. And now they're gonna block this camp, this camp again. Viz is still able to get more farm than what we've seen out from Absolute Legends. Like, he's 19 for 3 on this bottom lane. In comparison to now a 10 for 1 faceless void. And that's because he just got space with the creep wave. Again, he was shut down a lot more. Disruption, catcher. Now ever Vance Gore gets a pick up. Actually getting a big slow with a big jump over the top. Y'all losing a lot of life right now. And it will be enough for us to get first blood. The Fae Ball will go off with the Rocket Barrage. That's the damage to Biz. Forcing him both back towards that tier 1 tower. And it's actually a slight overcommitment, and we see the power of the catcher of Shadow Demon. Mm -hmm. The extra 20% damage was there, really able to help with that. So right now, Absolute Legends kind of pulling a little bit ahead right there. Very, very nice for them. And yeah, do you, just speaking about that before, with the CS, the most important heroes right now on Rock's Kiss actually in the lead right now. Those heroes that you really need to get the CS, those core items early on, the Bat Rider, the Queen of Pain, as well as Lifestealer. <laughs> That's going to be really, really nice for them if they continue to keep up this momentum with their CS because they're going to be looking at those items very, very soon, which is going to make the lives of AL very, very difficult. Another Soul Catcher going right now on the Buzz. Yeah, they're just they're just trying to make sure that Ross Kiss don't feel comfortable here on the bottom lane because they've been feeling comfortable up till now. But now they realize also that Rise, well, he can actually do some damage and with his Catcher, which is a level 2 Catcher as well, mm -hmm. with that amplification, they can lose their supports very, very quickly. Like, they don't really care as long as Nate's gonna stays alive, but then again, you don't want your supports just giving away for, like, free farm on the bottom lane. Yeah. It's out of the middle lane. Solo not going for that second level of the Shadow Strike, so kind of maxing out the Scream of Pain, which is definitely reasonable. Just gonna be able to pick up the Sonic Wave, also at level 6 just now. So really, we could be seeing actually action inside the bottom lane here. Well, I'm gonna have a crack, are they? So yeah, Vance Gold looking low. Biz not really looking in a great position either. The rocket goes on Yol, but it's just split between all three heroes. No focus on one exactly, it's like they're trying to force him off the lane. Because they can change that around once Unicorn is able to pick up his ultimate. Which is also just over a level away. And the tri lane, of course, that takes a little bit longer. But if we see if we see Miracle, as well as Rise go off and pull, then this will change around a lot. But they're actually doing some considerable damage to this tier 1 tower in the bottom lane. Actually, yeah, you're right, bringing all the way back to half. That's going to actually be really, really good for them. And also with the first night just being picked up here. Also level 6 from Clockwork from Miguel. Gonna pick up the invisibility rune. This is gonna create a big opening, I feel. Radiant for Absolute Middle Legends. Tower gonna be able to also attack. create more of a lead inside the bottom lane for this trialing of Absolute Legends. So hopefully he's gonna be able to rotate here, or at the very least, maybe even in the top lane to pick up Dread, but that's gonna be tough. Mm, killing, killing off Dread's next to impossible, yeah. man. Because you want to come in close to him, as, as you were saying before during the drafting time, the flame break will instantly push the clockwork back out again. So even if they're both caught inside the cogs, yeah. you're not going to stay close enough. So you, tr you try and go for your little rocket barrage kind of thing and say, oh, well, okay, that does absolutely nothing because he's uh, just now just pushed me away from him. I can't even get through my own <laughs> cogs until I kill them off. Yeah. And by that time, he'll, he'll firefly and then say, well, well you come into my flame and we'll... Exactly. He also just picked up his tranquil boots. So with that, also going to be able to increase the movement speed, going to make it even more difficult to try and get on a mm. secure, secure hook shot. So kind of going to be going a little bit safer in the bottom lane. Yeah, that's going to be Miguel with the invisibility rune activated, looking for an opening. Yeah, he found it too. Biz way too close in. Disruption, easy stuff. This classic combination here with Miguel and Biz. Boy going to jump in. Latrack over going to double stun him. Queen, Queen of Pain ultimate. Unicorn backtracking up a little bit. The clockwork is instantly new. And now they go through to go be denied! SD denied him during the engagement! So they don't get the glory of the kill, but they will come through and take out the secondary heroes. Quick stick charges up, Solo being catched up too, Biz being stunned up, and someone through the side, not gonna happen. There's Biz just getting forced back there. Very, very nice to on the catcher. Solo didn't want to come through, and the stick charge is making sure that SD stays alive. But that's only a one kill. They rotated everybody down from the, well, they rotated the mid, the mid lanes uh, from both Rocks as well as AL, yeah. but they only got the one. Void was denied. That was a good rotation too from Solo, just keeping note that, oh yeah, the clockwork's not here and that room yeah. was gone as well. Being able to keep that in mind, going into the bottom lane to just completely turn around that team fight was very, very clutch from him as he kind of hobbles back to base. So really, really good coming out from him here. Solo doing very nice. And also the RP finally up right now for Mania, though still the farm not quite there. He was able to find the levels, luckily. Yeah, he's doing a lot better now that bottle's up on the top lane. But the problem is these also they're running two bottles with one courier. 
which means it's a long, long time for, for refills. You can't just spam out like you used to be able to do with the Mag in the solo mid, because it's also a shorter distance for the Kuru to travel for that one. <laughs> but you, you're moving yourself up so far in the lane where the mid lane stays a lot more, a lot more uh, stable in between, like, here and here. Like, that's not that far for a lane to, to shift. <laughs> where yeah, if yeah. you go up towards the top lane, you got like, times that by about 10, you got to basically right. Denied. So they got to run, like, Miguel with Bottle as well as the Mag. And the only thing that saves is when Miguel gets rune control, like he has done now. So he's got regeneration rune up his sleeve. Unicorn also. Notice how Ryze just holding back a little bit there. It was still actually in experience range, Dyer's which I don't think was really his intention. Uh, but Unicorn's almost got level 6. And when we get Chrono time, then things make become very, very difficult for the bottom lane. Because the supports will melt. The supports will melt very, very quickly. Unicorn still needs to finish up his, like, his, <laughs> at least, treads. So yeah. he can have that increase in attacks because he needs that during the team fight. He exactly. needs it during the Chrono time. And Vanscore here, also not anywhere near level six. Well, he's about halfway through level four, so he's got a couple more minutes until he's going to be able to kind of make use of his ultimate to kind of throw around the Chrono that's going to obviously be coming out of Unicorn. Just picking up the Chrono also on him, level six for Unicorn. We're going to be starting to see a little bit more action here, I feel, very, very soon. Also, since Miguel is going to be level eight with the hook shot. Yeah, the action, the action will come when the Blink Dagger comes up on the Bat Rider. They're going to try and bring down top lane anyway. The Observer Ward goes down, so now finally Vanscore gets some decent vision on Mania. And that means straight Firefly, he doesn't need to do the last two, but he's going to do it anyway. I think he's a little bit fearful of Mania going in for the RP, and that's why Mania's grouping up. Gets two in the RP, and can now skew it back. It's going to pull him in range of a tier one tower. The pickup is there, but the support's TPing in. Now Miguel, oh, he got flame break that, that little bit further back. And then he's going to go through the fire of the flames, and he oldies into a creep. He won the line on Dread and just could not find it. It just didn't happen. That creep shouldn't have been there. So Miguel not being able to follow through with that hook shot. And sadly, he's going to have to return back into the middle lane. But first, going for that rune spot, it's going to be Solo picking up the illusion. That's also Batrider picking up a Blink Dagger. It's amazing what happens when you get yourself a kill. Exactly. So we get 10 minute Blink Dagger up, up for the Batrider. And this is something which really, AL, they are not prepared for. They are not prepared for this one. I want to see actually the Batrider rotate to the bottom lane. Because they've got to try and actually focus on this Faceless Void now. Because he's just farming up here, and no one's doing anything really about it. They're giving they're giving the Void a little bit more space. Sure, he's been shut down in the early point of the game, but still, with the power of Chrono, it doesn't really matter. All, all your farm, all your levels count for absolutely nothing when you've got to stand there, locked in time and space, unable to do anything. Dyer's exactly, and he has been having attack. a bit of a difficult time. He's only 30 and 6 right now compared to that half. That is actually half right now of Dreads, which is 68 and 13. Mm -hmm. So seriously, Dread making away with so much in this top lane right now. Well, Dread is one of the best off lane players, man. He does, he does a fantastic job almost every single time. Be it his Batrider, be it his Darkseer. Could also just be because Batrider is just so damn powerful. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and the laning we're really allowed for it too. So we're talking about with, with the clockwork as well as the magnet. You're in two melee heroes up against two ranger heroes. And the melee heroes which you're running, like, Clockwork has to be defensive with his cogs. And then you're looking at Mania, who can use Shockwave to try and farm up. But most of the time when he's napalmed, he's not going to stick around for long. Disruption, Catcher. Catcher goes on the wrong target. So not going to initiate there. And this, this is the rotation I was searching for. Dread's already here looking. He's got one wall that reveals out the fact if, if someone's going to be there. Not going to stay there for too long. Going back into the middle lane right now, and it's looking like, yeah, Roxka's is probably going to be wanting to take out this middle tower here. Mania also looking for a little bit extra, extra kills here. Picking up those arcane boosts just now, so that's going to be really, really good here to just help out with those mana pools. Be able to get the shockwave. It's going to be very, very nice for him as we see a little bit of an audio problem there. <laughs> yeah, as I, I just lost all audio. That was fun. Um, <laughs> Anyway, bottom lane, looks like Biz, Trouble, there's your Chrono now popping up from Unicorn. However, he's managed to catch Miracle at the same time, and that means Solo. Well, he got the disruption off at the end of this, but Solo's going to stick around for one scream. Miracle, but, well, no, he goes down. He was killed off by the creep wave that was there, skewering in. RP to catch off three heroes, and this is really troublesome, however, because the RP was stolen in return, and that means they hold him all in position. Drake comes out the Firefly. The Absolute Legend gets completely wiped out of that one. The RP was almost their saving grace, but then Vanscore, well, he was there and he had the finger on the button. Perfect timing for that and for also going to level six here, just out of nowhere. With that team wipe now, eight to one, Rock's Kiss is going to easily be able to take out this tier one tower and that's going to give them a massive, massive cushion. Feel safe about right here. 
And this is what we're talking about with, like, with like Latrax. We always talked about what would happen with Latrax when you win a team fight. Even with one point in Edict, they forced the fortification. And for some reason, they are falling back here. Like, Lansu might be down. So is the ultimate. In fact, there is not much mana left on um, on the Rubik, so he can't really cast much more. Radiant's but they want this tower dead. At the same time, Miracle searching for a denial. Not gonna happen. Radiant's Nate's gonna rage himself up. Ryze wants to attack him. He knows he can't do anything, so that rage is worn off. Now the SD with disruption, flame break, pushing Unicorn around. Vizzil wants to go in further. He knows he can life leech out, but how much can he life leech out when Ryze picked up, thrown back down again? He's got all the time in the world to leech it out. Finish up Ryze. Biz! 13 HP he went, he went down to, fighting up against the creep wave. At the same time, Void getting picked off a little bit deeper in by the Queen of Pain. And now it's 11 to 1 in favor of Roxkiss. Well, you know how he said before that my heart was going for Absolute Legends, but my brain said Roxkiss? This yeah. is the reason why my brain said Roxkiss. Exactly. And after that one, it almost seemed like they were kind of overcommitting to that tower too much because the rest of Absolute Legends was gunning it down there, trying to just prevent that tower from going down, but just being able to follow up with everything. They knew the Chrono was down. They couldn't really follow up with anything. Mm -hmm. Hookshot was still there. Obviously, the RP going to be down as well. They just were easily able to take that out, get an extra three kills on top of that one. So just pushing it even more forward right now for Roxas. They're looking so, so strong in this game as we see them well past the 5,000 gold mark. They're at about 7,500, and also that speaks the exact same for the experience. This is just... Rocks just getting momentum, and it won't stop. They got, they got great heroes that just roll with the punches, and Solo, if he wants, he can take Miracle out. In fact, there you go, Blink, Sting, and then Quick TP out. Solo needs basically two attacks. He missed up the hill, however. And that means Miracle able to get himself back out to safety. Very, very lucky to do yeah. so, but he won't be so lucky when he realizes just how much farm solo it's got. That's an Aghanim Scepter and 50 gold. What the hell, man? That's a little bit yeah. insane at this point right now, and it's just going to continue to... Mo the momentum is going to continue to go out of control. Spiral, we already have the armlet up here for Buzz, the face boots, the orb, and also the tier 1 tower most likely going to be the next target. Have health for that currently, as we just wait a little bit patiently here. Oh, Mania. He doesn't want to wait patiently. He wants his Blink Dagger. He does. He's he's so uh, far away from it, though, and it's it's, it's going to be... It's just killing him. It's got to be killing him. It's got to be killing him. Like, Rai is also walking around. Support Gyro, boots a stick, and then TP. Basically, summary of his SD looks just as, like, rich. So, basically, broke. And Unicorn on the bottom lane. He picks up the Glove of Haste. 15 minutes in. We're going to be past the time of Hand of Minus to try and get that completed. So, we're looking at him Maelstrom coming up from the from the void and that's okay because you got the empower buff up mm -hmm. so you do have the options from that one and he will have to come to the top lane in a moment he knows it too he has to tp in a moment the support's already coming in and dread got himself a bomb prepared and they'll look and see if they can find an opening the ping's coming off from the side they feel he's there and now the blink in rise too far up who they managed to get they got mania so they control the rp to start with Solo with a quick scream, the boy pops the Chrono, actually getting the three of them on the edge. Miguel will all vent score out of position, and he stole Chrono, and he threw it out, but he actually nailed! He nailed Absolute Legends absolutely perfectly. Three on the side, Mania is fought back to try and fight this one off. There goes Giraffe. he should pick up two kills from this one, but Biz, no! He has one charges, it's not going to be enough, he'll go down. Unicorn goes back out to safety, but this is going to be a tier one tower, and possibly even a tier two tower. Fan score right now, man. Every single time in those fights, he's just positioned himself perfectly, being able in that first engagement, take the RP. Now with the Chrono, everything's been landed perfectly here for Roxas as they take that next tower. It is just spiraling way too far out of control right now. We're 1 in 16 at the 17 minute mark. Yeah, this kind of makes me feel a little bit like our last game of yesterday. <laughs> when Harvey <laughs> up against Fnatic, obviously, like, Fnatic don't want to have to relive that one, and I'm pretty sure Absolute Legends. But for, for Fnatic, it was different. Like, they, they went down, like, go down to the bar, have yourself a drink after the match. But this one, it's like Absolute Legends. You play game number one, but you have to come mm. back directly after this and play game number two after this has happened to you. But really, a lot of this is already going to go down. I know Absolute Legends, they may not feel as, like, they'll feel bad about this game. Yeah. But they, they shouldn't feel massively disheartened. Because at the end of the day, this game, the control was lost during the draft. That top lane, it, that middle lane, it was just destroyed. And and justifiably so. You're going up against a Batrider and a Queen of Pain. There's no way you can win against those lanes unless you've got heroes which are just as good. But the puck was taken out. 
It wasn't, he wasn't selected. They tried to run Mag as well as Clockwork up against it. And the Clockwork yesterday worked very nicely for Absolute Legends because it was melee on melee. You could actually stick it to the man. Like, that worked for him. But in this scenario, it's a little bit more difficult. And now, Solo. <laughs> nice position there to try and pick up Miguel, but that's not going to be happening. It's, so. called, it's called King of the Castle play, man. King of the Castle. Mm. It's a good song about that. Also with that Agnum Scepter too, that's just going to push out so much more DPS for him as well. Rubik still with the Chrono also. If they're going to be able to initiate on that well with Rock's Kiss, that is just going to be way too much damage for Absolute Legend to try and live through. And you need, for Absolute Legend side, Radiant's you need to be able to get that Soul Catcher attack. off to be able to get enough DPS in with Faceless Void, but it's still not there. He doesn't have his Maelstrom yet. He'll get there eventually, but it's how much uh, Rock's Kiss can take in the meantime. And, and you know what's going to happen, like, AL is trying to, trying to actually, like, smoke gank the jungle. <laughs> they throw a rocket trying to push out the mid lane, actually, you're scouting up down to the bottom lane, in fact. Long way down, but Roxkiss probably should have thrown one over towards Roshan, because that's where they are right now, and they're going to finish the job. They're going to finish the job here. Now, there's your rocket coming into Roshan. Benscore already TP himself up to the tier 2 tower on the top lane. So it looks like Roxkiss, they have every intention of defending this top tower, but they've got to finish Roshan up first. Biz is going to be on very, very low life, so he doesn't want to instantly oh, TP go. himself up for this one. Oh, they really catch him? Yeah, he did. He got Vanscore. Vanscore pushed back and killed off. And now they will not try and defend this top lane. That was also a nice war placement there to be able to spot him. Unfortunately, he was picked off, but that is going to be the Aegis going to Rock's Kiss, which means this next engagement going to be even more difficult for Absolute Legends to try and live through. And who was able to pick that up? That is Biz. This is going to be the one with the Aegis. Also, the Mithril Helmer on him. So, definitely be expecting that Death Slayer to be coming out. Yep. It will be the normal build for him. Orchid or Death Slayer, that's the way they roll when they go aggressive on the Nakes. And that's exactly what he wants to have. Death Slayer up and running. Eat through that Faceless Void or Mania. Mania. He's looking for a jump in. There's your Chrono. Catching out Solo because Mania cannot come in close. Apart from just a Shockwave, he's still going to get hit. And using the RP as well. I'm not sure about this one because now Roskiss. They can turn to try and find this one. Miguel forced put up defensive cogs. Solo, there's no stump. They can't stop this. Biz has to arm the toggle himself away from this one. Yol trying to catch up, but the leap away. Solo's right behind him. Who's TPing out? Not. He's not. He's sticking around. Lasso, they get Unicorn. Pick him up. Pull him back. Let's rack stuns. Quap as well. And Mania. He's, use, he's using the sideboard max spot. He's going to hide himself up there. But in the meantime, he can't get out of here. No, he's going to have to make a run for it, though, at some point here. But that is going to be Vanscore here, just parking it up in the top lane, be able to push that through. Roxkiss also pushing in the Tier 2 tower right now as well, with that ward being placed just around the secret shop. Just any form of choke that's going to be a way for Absolute Legends to kind of roam around in, not going to be safe. Mm. And yeah, also the next Mithril coming up right here for Biz. Yeah, this is just getting to the point right now where Absolute Legends, they, they're they just trying anything. They're trying anything. The fact that they committed two big ultimates, like the RP as well as the Chrono, just to ensure one kill off. And that's a lot. Yeah. Because then Biz was like, sweet, let's open it up. Biz and Dre were like, okay, we're, we're, the, we're the two cores right now. Let's go kill everything. We could, we could do it quite easily. They'll take that, and they'll also take this Tier 2 tower right now as the rest of Absolute Legends is just kind of sitting here inside of the middle lane, helping back up Unicorn. Still not very well, or very close, I should say, to that Maelstrom at all quite yet. So that's just still not enough DPS coming out from Absolute Legends as they make a rotation here into the middle lane for Oxus. That's going to be the next tier two tower under pressure. Yeah, I'm glad it will be, but take some time before I can probably build up the full momentum to it. Because they're also going to realize that, like, Chrono pops off and we talk about them using two ultimates. Yeah. And, but by the time Rossi is taking out the tier two tower on the top lane, Chrono is now back up again. RP is now back up again. The ultimates, ultimates themselves have a low, have a low cooldown, but you still need to have that gap of like a minute between them. Mm -hmm. Without it, you just, you're not going to be ready to fight again. It's not going to be happening. And those are the two heroes right now that could definitely change it, but it's just still not happening because Mania doesn't even have his Blink Dagger quite yet. So that makes it all the more difficult to try and get into a position where you're going to be able to get those crazy RPs off and just turn the tide of those fights. I believe I just heard a smoke. That is actually in the middle lane. Mm -hmm. Ross gets to trying to get some insight on where AL are moving. And there's already D wards coming out and a very smart TP out by the Magnus. Realizes something's really awry. When you see aggressive wards like that, you know someone's going to be attacking you, and that's why you see the sentry ward up. 
They instantly wanted to make sure there was no, vis no vision deeper inside to see when AL is going to rotate into the jungle. And because of that, Rosk is going to waste a little bit of time here. But at the same time, there are ways to get that Solo's on the bottom lane farming up. You've got Lathrak now popping his level 10 in the middle lane. Walking around with a point booster and about to get ganked up. Miracle Disruption in the catcher. And they should be able to take this, but support will come in through the rear. Clockwork latches in. They instantly kill off Yolf. Remember, they've still got that RP as well as the Mad Chrono. Vanskull's looking for a steal, and then it comes in your blink. Insley put back, and what a big Chrono! Dread's locked in right now, and the jump in, it will be his death. Biz comes out of the Chrono and starts eating through Rise. He's got a lot of damage behind him with that Desolator, so he managed to go unstoppable right now. Solo preps the wings for the old one, doesn't need to do so. Blink, Scream, Sting, Unicorn, one hit, double kill, gonna go the way of Biz. 5 to 19. And Ross Kits will just make a beeline down that middle lane. Sure, they lost the Lashrag. Mm -hmm. But they've still got Solo as well as this, and that's all the damage they require when, when Void's on the sidelines. Nagar piece up and running. But it will take one hell of a jump in, and he still doesn't have that blink dagger. Not quite yet. He didn't even, yeah, use that RP in that engagement there. That's going to be the next tier 2 tower down. And Solo, I believe, very, very close now to picking up that Orchid. Yeah, 1700. Yep, there's, there it is. Completely purchased. Biz also being very, very lucky. Rockets flying out as well as Shockwaves before when he was retreat retreating out of the middle lane. Because the armor toggle brought him down to two life points at one point. But then he comes down the bottom lane and then just leeches everything back again. Find more farm for him in his next item. So now that Orchid is up and running, that's SD being locked down. And more than likely, I've got a funny feeling it's going to be focused on the mag. Like, Chrono is obviously there, but Chrono is this, like, double-edged sword. Who's going to jump in close and do the damage? Jaro can't get in close to do off his Rocket Barrage. His Flat Cannon's not really buffed up by anything. In fact, he's got a single point after Flat Cannon. It's a homing missile, as well as Rocket Barrage. And Magnus, he can throw a Shockwave from range, and then he, he's out. So the only damage dealing is coming off from this Faceless Void. Exactly. So being able to use the Orchid specifically on the Magnus is going to be very, very key, honestly, because they're going to be able to just kind of turn at least most fights with that, especially since it's level 2 right now on the Reverse Polarity. So to be able to just disrupt that is going to be very, very key as Absolute Legends go up here into the top lane. But right now, yeah, that is going to be every single tower down now for Absolute Legends. So they've pretty much lost all control right now of the map. And just Absolute Legends here looking for some opening, some way to be able to pick up a little bit more gold so that our Faceless Void here is going to be able to Dyer's try and do a little bit more damage. But it's just still... Solo? Solo? <laughs> <laughs> no, 100% sure what he was looking to achieve right then, but he walks directly into Unicorn as well as Ryze blinks over while, while Void just time walks himself back. I think, he, I think Void just instantly thought, okay, he's not suicidal, it's going to be a five-man gank. He's not running down the middle of a battlefield saying, don't shoot me. It's <laughs> just, yeah. It's actually exactly what he was doing at the end of the day. But no one would ever believe that. You'd always think Dred's just around the corner. Yeah. There's a Nakes inside him. But Nakes, Nakes was chilling inside of Rubik before with his infest. We also have Dred's four staff completed for him as well. And is just kind of getting too, too crazy right now. As we also see a point booster right now up for Yo. He's going to be a lot better off with his HP. Miguel also with the mechanism, so that's going to help keep the rest of the team alive here on Absolute Legends. But it's just not going to be enough when you've got that Desolator up on life. So they're continuing to just right click you down for crazy amounts of damage. So really, what do you do now if you're Absolute Legends? Hope that Rock's Kiss comes in a little bit too aggressive on the high ground. Hope for a mistake. Yeah, you, and you, hope, you hope for a five-man fight. You hope yeah. for a five-man fight and Mag to get the best RP of his life. It was actually the reason why Absolute Legends went into the Dire Jungle before. Because they were looking for the farm for Mania. They mm -hmm. couldn't do it in their own jungle because it's basically being completely patrolled by Rock's Kiss. So that's why the three of them actually went up towards the Dire Side Jungle. And they got Mania that remaining like 200, 300 gold to get the Blink Dagger up and running. And now, there you go, they make a move and they're searching for an opening. And, yep. when, and when they find it, then they'll be like, sweet. Two kills, three kills, claim a tower maybe, and just go from there. And they found one. Solo, instantly chrono. But this is that problem again. The catcher can go out, the shockwave's there as well. Queen of Pain does go down at that time. I'm in a world but then instant pain. support comes in and Queen of Pain buys back. They're looking for an opening, and oh, they found one. Mania, really caught out. Well, that blink digger worked. And then four staff, oh, Miguel, he tries to hold himself away to safe. We're not gonna work out because flame breaks back. So two heroes on the sidelines now. Rocks just have an opening. They can move inside the base, and all it costs was a buyback from Solo. 
seriously. That was very, very nicely done here. Dread also finishing up the BTs. This is pretty much looking like a tier three, easily going to be able to be taken out, but that's going to be Clockwork buying back into the game as well. He's got no ultimate to latch in though. All he's got is the mech as well as the like, defensive cogs. That right, rocks gets they're already up on the high ground. Fortification has to come off. That's only one point in Edict, but it's enough. It's enough to make him fall back a little bit and wait for the new creep wave to arrive. And that buys time for the mag. Mag back up again in six seconds time. And he'll have Blink RP available. This is a better position for him to use that Blink RP. AL went blindly out into the map last time. And this time around, fighting with Roskis, showing all five of themselves here in the mid. And looks like they just give it up. Been chased by a missile, so it's still going to reveal the fact of what's going on. So this little thing does carry its vision. Yeah, so really what AL has to do, and I was asking before, like, in this position when you're just kind of stuck inside of your base, what do you really do? Waiting for a mistake to come out from Roxas is just a position you don't want to be in. That's actually be bottom solo, <laughs> clearing out the creep wave with the scream, obviously. With an egg, going to be able to do that. You get an only cooldown of like 40 seconds. Yeah. Like, who, who gives a crap, man? Who gives a crap? Just making even more pressure for Absolute Legends, but... Yeah, really, when they went for that smoke egg inside the middle lane, they were at least able to pick up solo, but at the end of the day, with the buyback, it's just not enough. It's not going to be enough to stop them, so you pretty much just have to kind of park it up, kind of turtle up a little bit, and hope that Roxas overextends, because when you're in a position like this at 6 to 21, it's going to be too difficult for you, honestly. Mm -hmm. Grab the legends. Also, the Aegis is now available. Oh, yep, Roshan comes up and the rocket, perfect timing. Rosk is still going to move in and of course you can see the vision from the flare there. Still up, so they know exactly that Rosk is committing in for Roshan. And this is the best place for, for AL to fight. The problem they have is the bottom lane's been pushed out, the mid lane's been pushed out, so it's very obvious that they're coming in. The clockwork with a latch, mag with a blink RP. Anything is really possible for them right now when you have such a narrow choke point. But it's taking too long. Yeah, that minus armor just completely melting Roshan easily. Coming out of the death later, so they're going to be able to take that. And now that's going to make it very, very difficult for Absolute Legends to try and turtle against this. Yeah, this is... It, it's still down the RP of the Magaldi, man. Yeah. That's, that's AL saving Grace, but you want to try and save Grace of 17,000 experience and about 20,000 worth of gold? Uh, that's a lot of Grace, <laughs> man. That's a lot of Grace. But 6 to 21, 30 minutes in. AO won't give it up easy. They really, really won't. They'll, they'll force Rock, Rock's Kiss to fight for this one, because it's also another little thing to bear in mind, that when you play a best of three, mm -hmm. there's no point just GGing out 15 minutes in if you think it's going to be over, because some of the time, pushing stamina levels, pushing people's experience, sometimes you can force a, you know, force a mistake out. Yeah. So you stick yourself inside the game, maybe find an opening, maybe find a couple of kills go your way. And then the game could just turn around, especially in the land environment when you get the pressure on you. Exactly. Dread also right now just going to be parking it up just north of the middle lane right now, looking for a pickoff with the bomb to be able to push in this lane here up top. And really, it's going to be coming down to this one if he's going to be able to just follow up really, really nicely. And that's going to focus Mania to be trying to lock down the nakes. But really, you don't want to reverse polarity. Just a single hero right there. Got to look very, very patient. Got to stay behind the line. Otherwise, Roxas is just going to immediately drag you out with a bat rider lasso. Mm -hmm. Which looks like what Dread exactly wants to do now. Yeah. Or maybe just going to farm up the lane. Maybe some support to come in from Vanskull. Because he's got a lovely ability that just lets him jump into the fight and then go telekinesis. So, hey, go for it. But Mania at the same time wants, wants to do this. The Batrider, quick four stuff. Way to safety. Radiance bottom just bumping AL around attack. the map. In the meantime, Roskis keep getting stronger and stronger, but they, they don't want to break the base yet. Mm -mm. They're, they're poking and prodding. They want to get a couple of kills before they go in. They still give respect to the team fight of the capabilities of Absolute Legends. And it's there too. You keep saying it is the RP, it is the Chrono, and also you're going to be able to follow up with the Call Down, which is almost level 2 as well, Rise, close to level 11. But really, he doesn't really have a whole lot of items because that is, of course, that support. Mm, all good. Disruption has to come off just to make sure Unicorn stays safe. But all that was thrown was uh, the Orchid and the Shadow Strike. Minimal, minimal uh, cooldowns and minimal mana. While Dread keeps having fun on the top lane. Nakes unable to get farm because he's currently sitting inside of Dread. Yeah, he's been there for quite a bit now. Dread also about to hit level 16. He's just going to be going through the jungle here. I find the music that Dread's still touching his keyboard and mouse, though. <laughs> uh, 
Not right on. Nate's still touching his keyboard and mouse. Blink in. Lasso, they got one. Unicorn picked up. Lasso, pull him out, and then just eat through the life points. He couldn't backtrack enough of that. And that's already the void on the sidelines. While Solo is poking and prodding on the bottom lane, four heroes coming through the top. Make charge will pop two. Nice. Getting the life. Back. Nice RP. Three to skewer back as well. Needs to be a little bit more follow up. Nice call down, but then the RP it got returned again. Vanscore catching out the two. Unicorn who bought back will now die down again. Beers on a double kill. Solo throws the ultimate out. Not enough to kill off Miguel, but they're already slowing him down. And Yol, well, what's he got? Nana, sick charges, doesn't matter. Solo, one more click. Nice deny again from, from uh, the Shadow Demon. He did it at the start of the game, but this is going to be the end of this. The top racks will go. Top are under the bottom is already being pushed in. Top has and that RP again from Vanskor, what a perfect timing, man. It really was. And also Dread being Radiant's able to just pick them off here inside of their base at that tier three, right along the left side of the map be able to just kind of do that as well as forcing the buyback from Faceless Void and immediately killing him afterwards as well with no chrono. That's just spelling doom here as we kind of look for this next oncoming death push inside of the middle lane very, very shortly. Also, the heart being picked up right now for Biz is perfect. That's just going to make it near impossible to be able to try and kill this guy. Also, the RP still on cooldown right now. At least they have the chrono, but still, they're just going to be playing it safe right now as Rox can kind of just back it up a little bit as Buzz farms up the Ancients. I like this from Solo. We're seeing Veil of Discord as well as Ghost Scepter. So Jara can't do any damage to him. Void can't do any damage to him. Mag, well, little point magical damage, but he oh, can't. Man. No one can actually hit him. And then he turns around and says, well, I can amplify you as well as throw out the ultimate, which is going to destroy all of your life points, doesn't matter who you are. They just need that one lock in position. And funnily enough, there's one hero, which I know exactly would like to do it, and it's called Dread. Exactly. Just that extra 25% damage in that AoE from the Veil. Going to be so nice, especially paired up with the Sonic Wave. Oh, I believe. Work. Oh. Carrying the latch in. The Chrono has gone off. Dread caught on the edge of this one. Vanscore should be an easy seal, but he's got the RP off cooldown. Three seconds time. So we can turn around and try and fight this one. There goes the RP off from Mania. Queen of Pain, Alderman. And that was combined up with the Battle of Discord. And then yet secondary RP holding Unicorn there. So the two cores go down. Miracle will be melted by Yol. Walking around his BKB. Dread's from down some back. And there's the GG call coming off. Ross Kiss will take game number one here. And they take it in very, very convincing style. Taking 35 minutes in total to do so. But absolute legends. Gotta go back to that drafting board, man. Gotta go back to that drafting board. Exactly. Look at that net worth as well, man. It's just absolutely insane. All in favor right now of Rock's Kiss during the end of that, even though it is completely distributed along that 17k for that Nakes. Just absolutely insane, man. And just great positioning and pickoffs right there. Van score being able to just take every single one of those RPs. It was like every time mm -hmm. that Mania tried to go for it, he was able to steal it at the last second there. Yep. And that really, really helps set up the team fight. So it's like, what, what are you going to do with it? Like, you, you, you try and get yourself in, you go with your RP, you might go for a shockwave after that point, but there is still that small gap that was there. Mm -hmm. I never really saw the follow-up. Like, there was never the RP, shockwave, skewer back out again. It all took time to transition through it. Yeah, they did a great job at just disrupting it because there should have been a flow. It should have been systematic, but they were not able just to do it at all. They mm -hmm. should have seen that RP with the Corona, with the call down, but it just wasn't there. So very, very nice. Very, very convincing, of course, for Roxkiss, as Toby was saying. Yeah, I'm looking forward to if they can do it in game number two because I'm also looking forward to seeing what Zoe Imperium flags have in store for us. We, try, we go over to them. Welcome back everybody here to your coverage of the Raycall EMS1 Spring Finals. I am Toby Wonka and I'll be joined by Kawa for game number two is what we're up to. AL versus Rock's Kiss and looks like both the teams already ready to rock and rumble, man. So uh, yeah, that, that had the go button. Dang. Uh, we can get ourselves underway. Of course, uh, we are well hoping we get a little bit more of a closer game than what we had in our last one. That was a little bit one-sided, and that was just because, of course, Rocks Kiss excelling at that extremely early game aggression. They just mm -hmm. kind of continued to pile it up there, and really just the lineup of Absolute Legends wasn't really capable of dealing what they were able to dish out. They were very distributed about the map later on more than they should have been and they just immediately took advantage of that with five man team fights just mm -hmm. right off the bat just taking out so many and van score man van score being able to steal all of those initiation abilities from yep. absolute legends was just so key in being able to kind of help out make that even more one side than really yeah. what it should have been yeah really the, the momentum they had from the from the top lane the mid lane rocks kiss was just 
It was too much to handle because that does give space, like as you're saying, like for Vangskol to do what he wanted to do. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, moments like that, and you're just like, okay, life is life is really good. Let's enjoy this game, guys. But let's also focus on game number two and see how this is going to unfold. Once again, Wisping banned out, but this time around, there is going to be no contest with the Bat Rider. He will be removed, as we saw just how, just how powerful he is in the last game. You, you can't let him through, especially if you can't get a great matchup against him. So, Bat Rider taken out, Wisp being taken out. And we'll see if we go through a little bit more of a, uh, I say a standard draft to start this one off. Nick's still available because we look, we haven't seen the lone druid. He, in fact, uh, manages to avoid the entire of the last game. Hmm. But the Magnus also. I think mo- most teams kind of want the Magnus. So, keep the like as banned out. Mania probably just wants to slip that mag through so we can get him first pick up. That would be really nice. And just, yeah, being able to ban out the Keeper of the Light. Anytime he did get into the games yesterday was just absolutely nasty because we just saw so many heroes that are mana reliant early on to be able to just kind of continue to do crazy amounts of aggression. Like that Storm Spirit game, I believe it was. It was just really, really nasty with Na'Vi. Mm-hmm. Uh, just that last game yesterday was just absolutely crazy. So he's going to be taken out there, as well as the Darkseer for Rock's Kiss. So we're going to already start off the drafting portion. Yeah, that we will, man. In fact, uh, the first part of it's over, so the first ban. And uh, Nyx Assassin is, in fact, going to be the pick-up the Mania wants. Kind of had a little bit of a longer decision on that one, because normally you'd say, okay, Nyx will be banned off, so then you just take the mag. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in this scenario, though, the Nyx able to get through the pool, and he's not going to turn it down. So Nyx Assassin, and then in return, Biz goes with the Live Stealer. And do we also... Buff him up with the mag. That's the question for Biz. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they they didn't let that go. Even though it came in very, very late in the previous game for Absolute Legends picking him up, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Rocks were to be able to get this second pick up here for him. Because it's just going to create so much damage coming out from the live steer in AoE. So honestly, with that initiation capability, with the bombing, just mm-hmm. bombing constantly, honestly, we've just seen it. <laughs> we've seen it all day yesterday, and it's looking like we're going to be seeing it today. That's just going to create a lot of openings here for Rock's Kiss early on. Well, they actually go with the Jaro to start with, though. So Jaro and Nakes together. This does mean it's going to probably more than likely be a support Jaro, unless we go into what was happening yesterday with the, with the kind of like long lane style Nakes and then like a safe lane Jaro, which then gets the supports to rotate down to him a little bit afterwards. But yeah, Roskis, they go with the Jaro. They're going to hold that up against Absolute Legends. An AL with a Nyx already available. They won't have the Nakes to combine with that one. They're going to look for something else, which means normally... Well, you don't need to get that hero just let, yeah, yet unless you kind of fear the bands of it, like the little track leaner kind of thing again. Uh, fantastic heroes. I just love them. Absolutely love them. And they work so beautifully with the Nyx Assassin. But Mania, he still needs more. He still needs, he needs to decide, do they have enough control? How, how do they, in fact, lock down the Nakes? Most of the time, you'd say the Bane. The, yeah. Most of the time. You go, and there and we there go. It is. The Bane for Absolute Legends. They, anno- they ignored it in the last game. They ignored it in the last game, and it kind of cost it. But this allows them now to run an aggressive try lane up against the Nakes. And feeble it up. You got the Bane, you got the Nyx together. Go one more slightly aggressive hero, preferably ranged. Mm-hmm. And try and stick it on that bottom lane. Hopefully be able to have a hero there on Rock, so to be able to kind of disrupt that channeling, of course. We were seeing in yesterday's games, yeah, Clockwork being one of those great heroes to be able to try and deal with that. In and there you go, Queen of Pain is the third one. So stable laning. Stable laning is what they search for. And then SD, ra- rather quickly picked up by Rock's Kiss. That's also, yeah, a little bit a little bit nice to be able to disrupt in case Bane were to be able to kind of fully channel that one. To be able to cancel it with a disruption is going to be very, very nice also. And just having just a really, really strong laner in this one is going to be really nice as well. So that is a nice option here coming out from Rock's Kiss early on. going to be very, very nice, honestly, with that tri lane that they've got going on there. Queen of Pain obviously going to be nice be able to just set up a lot of damage early on for Absolute Legends, but who's going to be that mid lane right now for Rocks? Because that is the question. Well, it's still pretty much open, and uh, Absolute Legends starting to ban out against uh, heroes, which actually caused some issues with Queen of Pain, so Night Stalker being removed off. Clockwork Goblin again also being removed, probably a little bit worried about that off laner possibility. Yeah. Um, and then Rocks Kiss, like Weaver as well as PL. They know the number one slot is not filled by Absolute Legends. It's the only one that can be guaranteed is not filled up just yet. Yeah, and we saw actually in that previous game yesterday with Dreads Weaver, that was absolutely nasty. Mm-hmm. He went like 16 and 4, I believe it was, also paired up with a Tinker. Yeah, that's, it was, was a level 5 day. He game. was given so much space. It yeah. was given so much space, had a lot of farm to start with. And yeah, after that point, you're just like, well, okay. 
prefer not to see that kind of hero up against him again. So, easiest way to do it, mounting out in the third stage. But it means there's still two more bands left here. Mania is, is really difficult to ban against when they take out the puck. They take out the pucks. They're just trying, they're protecting the middle lane. Mm -hmm. They're protecting the middle lane as much as possible. And then Alchemist is the final ban out here by Biz. So another one, which is just a hero, which if you're trying to can, like, like fight for the farm, so I'm saying on the bottom lane, you say on the top lane, who gets more farm than that one? Alchemist yeah. is the one hero you never want to fight up against that way. So for me, it looks like Ross gets want to run a defensive tri lane right now. SD, Gyro, as well as Nakes. Mm -hmm. Look for the pulls. They could go slightly aggressive with this one. They could also run the Gyro as a solo mid up against the Queen of Pain. Not a bad option, but not really the best option you could ever go for. But they're also running out of other options as far as going up against the Quop. Yeah, and actually, surprisingly enough, Yuron is still inside of the pool. Just as an offlaner, you're still going to need to find one right now for Rock's Kiss. So that is still a viable option for him. Bounty Hunter as well. We've been seeing Dread play him particularly well in a couple of the games, obviously. No, that's going to be mm. Furion actually for Absolute Legends. So that's going to be that offlane being picked up for them. Split pushing going to be very, very nice, especially when those team fights are going to be happening all the time with Rock's Kiss. Obviously, speaking about that and how they commit so many heroes into those lanes, that's just going to allow the Nature's Prophet to be able to kind of just push things down and be able to just TP in immediately whenever things are starting to kind of go awry. So it's going to be a good pickup right now for Absolute Legends, I'd say. Yeah, it's, it's a nice selection. Of course, it uh, also gives them a lot more options if they're going to try and run that aggressive trial lane, which I'm still hoping AL will attempt with the Nyx, the Bane, plus one, which will be the last selection. So Nature's Prophet could run top lane solo. Because mm -hmm. right now, Rocks kiss their off laner. Well... There's a lot to decide right now, and I'll probably say Windrunner might, or might be a very nice selection. Could be looking at the Bounty Hunter at the same time. Yeah. So, something with a little bit more counter push, something that can deal with Nature's Prophet's trees pushing down will be a nicer selection for them. So, no Rock's Kiss. Yeah. Offlander is all they need, so yeah, Windrunner will be very, very nice for them. And then Mania, his last selection, that aggressive style hero. Who do they really combine up now with the Bane? And we go with the DK. We go mm. with the DK. When you're looking for an aggressive style hero, you're looking for a stun, and you're looking for the like tank ability in an offlane, DK yep. always fits the mark. And he's really, really flexible as a carry, too. So you're going to be able to kind of level up those skills early on, depending on what the scenario is for him right there. The amount of damage that's going to be coming out, obviously maybe going to want to try and max out that blood. Dragon's blood going to be very, very important. But yeah, just an all-around good utility kind of carry, I would call him, and really going to be nice, especially if he's going to be able to pick up that farm early on. Mm -hmm. Well, Biz, give me what I feel you're going to do anyway, man. Give me what I feel you're going to do anyway. And he actually goes something a very silencer. different. <laughs> Throwing a silencer in towards the mix, so it will actually be dread as the Nakes, and this puts a silencer on the safe lane bottom. Gyro to go in towards the solo mid roll, and this is an aggressive tri lane by Rock's Kiss with a lean of the SD as well as the Nakes. Huh. Even if it's not an aggressive tri lane, those three will stick together. They will, and they're going to be able to pick off quite a few heroes. Really got to be scared if you're Bane in Absolute Legends shoes. <laughs> Seriously. Well, you'll never get a Fiend's grip off. No. Unless it's on Silencer. That's the only way to do it. But then again, you've got SD with disruption, you've got Lena's with stuns. Mm -hmm. So all three of those heroes are capable of shutting down the Bane, but also shutting down heroes like Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain's going to be walking around going, well, I want to blink, I want to oldie, I want to scream, I want to do all this kind of stuff. Exactly. But it's basically a muted scream because the silencer. Yeah, the mobility just completely gets shut down, as well as with Nature's Prophet, when he's going to be wanting to try and get into those fights when things are going wrong with the teleportation. That's not going to be happening for a couple of seconds, and those seconds are extremely, extremely valuable when those team fights go. So already starting off the game right now. Checking off the side right now of Absolute Legends, we've got Unicorn. Yeah, I've got to be Prepare playing the Dragon Knight. Battle. Miracle there, going to be playing Nyx. Rise as the Bane, Miguel as the Queen of Pain. And finally, Mania going to also be picking up the Furion as a smoke gang happens up here inside of the top lane. And then we have right now for Rock's Kiss. Ben Score going to be leading the charge though, man. Shadow Demon. Buzz is perfect on Gyrocopter. Solo going to be playing. Oh, a nasty, nasty silencer in this game, as well as Dread on the Nakes, and finally Yo on Lena. The really hilarious thing is this smoke isn't really meant for a gank. This smoke is to help AL get themselves in position inside the jungle. And because they didn't get all five, I don't know if this is the reason why they didn't do it, but Rise, he's a long way down here, wanting to plant like an aggressive ward about that spot right there, if he can do so. And then Rocks gets, uh, well, we've just taken five heroes, run in, plant down the Observer Wards. There's no vision whatsoever from AL that this kind of thing is happening right now. 
They're still blind on the map, and looks like they even get a little bit more defensive. They throw a very, very defensive ward here. It sees nicely down the side, and sees nice and deep as well. You're seeing, yeah, there, there's your depth mm -hmm. on that top lane as far as the ward vision goes. But it's just AL. It already feels like they want to be insanely defensive here in game number one. Yeah. Where Dred's like, well, okay, you can be defensive, but I don't really care. You're not going to be able to kill me off if I've got myself rage up and available. It's true now, Miracle. Hopefully he's going to be able to spot Devil, that block right now it. coming out from Rock's Kiss. Already planning down the sentry there. And yeah, he's going to be having to look a little bit in a different area to try and pick that off. Stop that blocking. As we see Mania inside the bottom lane just kind of going to be trying to stay there. Up against Business Perfect with a double damage rune. I think Miracle realized he's got to cut through the tree line in a moment. Trying to find this ward, as you were talking about before. Smoke ganking towards the middle, because you knew this one was going to come. Yol as well as Van Vanscor were not looking to be up on that top lane straight away. They want Miguel, and Miguel already leveled up Blink. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, 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 a very, very exciting start to this game right now, as we see a pause already followed up with that very, very clutch disruption. PGG! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Amazing play. Amazing play. There's actually some trouble while all that was happening. There's actually <laughs> trouble lane. on bottom lane. Uh, so there was a pause down here, and Biz already used his rocket barrage. It's ended up, but he had the DD at the very, very start. That's the reason why yep. Mania's got so little life. And funnily enough, this is actually helping us, because now we get to see our first blood. Mania, one more hit from Biz. One more, one more hit from, one more hit from Biz. Oh. He's not going to catch him. He's not going to catch him. The Kree wave is there. Nice two coming out from Mania. And he's going to be able to salve up and be able to still stay in that lane. Puppy Paul is helping commentator since Ray called EMS 1's finals. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Looks beautifully, man. And now we get our trial, our trial lane up on top lane. So th this, is, this is what we were looking for. We're looking to see that SD as well as Alina come up here oh, and make a life a living hell for Unicorn. They found the ward now. Just pinging it immediately on the spot. Ray's going to be able to spot that off and they're going to be able to just unblock camp there. You've now got three supports up here. Uh, the two, su two supports up here with the Nakes, you're still never going to be able to get that top lane down. I also love this too, the fact that, you know, we, we got fooled again when we were when we were talking about uh, who would take what and where they'd end up because Solo took the silencer in the end, end too, so mm -hmm. he's having a great time there in the mid. So it's not a carry silencer like we thought it was going to be because it was Biz who originally selected the silencer. Yeah. Mm, stuns out in dread. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He's got an extra life leech, life strike array hits on Unicorn, he doesn't care, he's got Dragon Blood. While well, Vanscore, looking to block up the camp again. Even though he's still got his own ward up here, he's just not yeah, sure about it. Thing. So he keeps the body there anyway. And this middle lane, 8 for 1 up against 10 for 1. Miguel's got the bottle running out, Solo also got the same thing, one with a flying courier, one with just like a walking courier. Mm -hmm. And a 2 minute rune, it's a regeneration for Solo. Oh, that's perfect. Mm, he couldn't help Solo to keep him in there. He waits a little bit there, though. He could have used up the bottle and then just, uh, like, bottled them, the regen. Mm. So then he could come back and then have it all over again. But he decides not to. So he's going to man up here against Miguel. Last word, still having a little bit of longer on a cooldown. But it doesn't really cost him that much mana. And he just throw out those nukes all the time. And you got to see Miguel just drop down. 170 life points now. Looking very, very unhealthy. Yeah, just having to use the Bottle Crow in this situation for Miguel, and that's going to be just bring, bringing it back here in the lane. Also, Mania having to just teleport back into his base because just the damage coming out right now from Biz has just been insane, leveling up the flat hand like crazy. Obviously going to be doing a lot of damage early on with that as he continues to find that farm 12 and 5 for him. And up in the top lane, I thought we were going to be seeing something there. That's just a little bit of a whiff of a stun. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's only 90 mana and you got a 400 mana pool. That's the, yeah. that's the beauty of it. It's not like you're walking around with like Skeleton King and throws one Hellfire Blast. It's like, yep, I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm spent. We're all beavers. We're all beavers. Miracle going for the pull there. It's looking like Vansberg will be trying to disrupt that, and he does. Nice Very done. nice. It's, it's easy, easy to see. Easy to see. Just going with good lane control. Trouble in the middle lane, though. There's now a Bane that's moved in towards that mid, which means now also top lane realizes so they're the ones with the advantage. It's 3v2 up here. It's true. They're going to want to try and move in on that. They should definitely be able to do so. Unicorn now picking up his boots, though. So a little bit more mobile with that. And that's going to be Miracle kind of diving out of the lane right there. So that's going to leave him alone. So definitely an option as Rise. Yeah, taking a little bit of damage there with that nuke from Solo. 
going to be hitting level 6 very, very soon here. As well as this is perfect inside the bottom lane. Yeah. And he's, yeah, now just kind of creeping up into the top now in terms of CS. Just making it very, very much of a nightmare here for Mania as that flat cannon continues to just damage him down. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah. It's so hard to stand up against a gyro like this, especially as Mania. Like, you know this bottom lane is not going to work nicely. He used so many consumables at the very, very early start, too. Mm -hmm. He was very, very lucky not to give away the first blood, which we also still haven't seen yet. That's not happened. We're almost five minutes into this game. The tri lane's been searching for it, but it's been just some good stuns coming off from the Nyx that hasn't allowed for it. And now we're actually going to have Nyx rotate Dyer's to the middle lane. This is Nyx, who is attack. level one. Nature's Prophet started his TP, and I don't really see what they're going to try and achieve up here on the silence, because get the silence up one, and then if you dive on the top of that tower, he'll just start nuking you down. Miguel lets off a screen, but he's still taking so much damage already. Then a 200 from that. The level three last word. So 250 damage almost every time. Seriously, every time too he does that, that brings Miguel pretty close to half health. So really to be able to go into any kind of team fight for an initiation is going to be very, very difficult for Miguel mm. for the next couple of minutes no, as he this, rotates this the is, bottom. This is really attack. smart from him. Biz was actually creep skipping it out. He was between the tier one, tier two towers. So Prophet uh -oh. with a sprout turns around for the call down. Flat can as well as a lot of damage to many, but Biz, he'll go down first. Nice rotation from Miguel, and that is the first blood. Just a little. At the end of the day, that was kind of business problem. He ended himself, and I was like, look at him just sitting right here in this box right here. Mm -hmm. He was not moving from it. It's like he wanted to do what Darkseer does with the, with the whole creep skipping and Iron Shell, but that doesn't really work when TV support can come into town, which is just so close to you. Like, even on the bottom lane, if you're creep skipping normally in this region here, mm -hmm. that's how far it is to the tower yes. on, on the right, and that's how far it is to the left. It's very difficult to gank up a Darkseer when he does do so, and then you've also got Surge to get yourself away. So you've got all these combinations, and this time Beers just got caught between the towers, didn't go out through the ancient area, and got killed off. First blood, the way of AL. Nice little block there from Dread up in the top lane, just blocking that creep camp there, just to prevent more pulling coming out from Absolute Legends. Miracle. Maybe a little bit of trouble. He's been chased down by Solo. Solo, he's got boots up. Miracle does not, so he could have actually kept chasing them. But decides it's not worth, of it, worth his time. He wasn't going to catch up enough to Miracle to kill him off. He just comes back in towards the middle lane where Miguel is licking his wounds. Mania right now also just farming up the creeps, playing it safe. Going to be able, the Ancients I should say, up inside of his own jungle. So going to be looking good there. Also level 6. Wow. Also we're going to be seeing Miguel picking up that Sonic Wave also. So the next coming team fight is really hopefully going to be able to deal out quite a bit of damage. And nearly getting taken out right there by that nuke. It's a dangerous wall to play in when you try and play up against a Silencer as a Queen of <laughs> yeah. Pain. And, and you're seeing it having its effect. Like, you look at Solo in the middle lane, it's 20 for 4 up for, for him, and it's 32 for 11 for Solo. Sorry, and it's uh, 20, 20 for 4 up for the Queen of Pain. Yeah, he's just been keeping him back continuously, making it so, so difficult for him to just try and find any and kind of CS from a top goal. lane, too. You got Dread is walking around with 38 for 17, in Unicorn, 17 for 2. Completely out, out lane oh right now. God. Yeah, you're And then right. Biz on the bottom lane, 48 for 11 up against a prop, who's 12 for 5. While well, first Blood might have gotten in the way of AL, didn't realize just how, how much needed that was. Double TP is going to be the bottom lane. Bane, Nightmare is needed. He needs to slow down Van score. Not going to work. Mania comes in, disrupts on himself, and a oh. big call down. And the Silence from, comes out. The Global as well from Silencer, which means two heroes go down. Miguel couldn't throw out any kind of damage from that one. No possible supports either. And he's still chasing at Miguel, looking very, very low here. And now he's going to back off after that one. Nice. Nice turnaround there coming out from Rock's Kiss. And just a little bit of an overcommitment right now from Ale as they pick up a tier one tower on top of that. Mm -hmm. Now Rock's Kiss, two to one. This momentum going to be starting to kind of pick up. And that would have been a perfect fight for Absolute Legends if Global Silence wasn't there. Even with the SD disruption, then they could have dealt with the gyro, but Queen of Pain jumped in and all of a sudden I was like, well, I, 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 I can't do anything. I'm, I'm not a right click hero. Exactly. I'm, a, I'm a magic dealing hero and I cannot cast any kind of ability. So what do I do then? I stay exactly where I am, and just do nothing. Take a little bit of damage, then walk away. And he does so. Back in the top lane now. Still, it's looking like Dread is doing amazingly well against Unicorn. Still very, very far behind. Half of the CS currently going to him, and all those denies right now on Dread, just making it mo more and more difficult for him. Try to grab anything, honestly. So he's still looking for his treads on for Unicorn. Still not there, as we see Buzz is Perfect finally going back into the bottom lane, as well as Miguel. Also trying to look for a little bit of a pick up here, maybe. Going to need a little bit more follow-up, though, because still, it's only level 7. Mm -hmm. And I like this little space for Yol. 
Good luck there, Miracle. They've, this is actually the, the two supports. Like, yeah, I was gonna I, say. I need level six. You need level six. Can we just agree to let's, farm? <laughs> let's just do this. Yeah, let's just truce, and then once level six, we start going. Okay, okay. Sound, sounds like a plan. It's like those RTS. Yes, it's a ten-minute ceasefire. <laughs> Brings you back to the old days of total annihilation. Good days, man. No rush. No good, rush. Yeah. <laughs> good days. Total annihilation. Dark rain. Oh yeah. Give me, give, give me like four shockwaves any day. And then just cry as your base disintegrates. Oh. Yeah, see, lover of all games, lover of all games. I think all Dota players are, considering we, we're all about like it's like custom game central uh, in, in Warcraft Three, so we always got used to that. The memories mm. I have of those. The memories flood. Well, we've seen more of that. Yeah. But let's let's, let's look uh, at three heroes in middle lane. I was just this, about to say this is death for anybody who gets caught. If disruption happens, they're dead. It's that simple. It doesn't even matter if they get, if they get the catcher or not. It's the fact that you'll put off the last word, throw up Van Score with the disruption set up, and then you'll also have Yol who can follow up with his stun, which is up at level two, and then the Slave, which is up at level three. Ryze and Unicorn want to go on the top lane. Dread just tries to rage up. He can't do it just yet. He's got one second cooldown on it. Open wins out and Unicorn bids. Nice call down. Unicorn turns to try and find this one. He loses all of his life. Ryze being silenced off from the side. Two very quick, easy, simple executed kills. Miguel here in the bottom lane throws the oldie out, but stick charges keep Vanscore alive. They're, they're, this is just like there is not a single attack. rose coming up for Absolute Dyer's Legends. Everything is, is just being attack. like tossed into the surge pit. And this is just what's happening again. Rox gets with four up in the top lane, being able to follow up with the rotation from that. Getting those two kills on Bane and Dragon Knight. Seriously, you couldn't ask for a better pickoff with the tier one tower being taken Dyer's out right now. Four to one, fallen. over 5k Radiant's economic advantage right here for them as we see middle lane now will be the next target. You, you have a level five Lena that's happy to TP into the middle lane up against four heroes on the opposition, which is like a level almost six Nyx, Mania who's up at level eight. And he's like, I don't care. I'll still go into this one, and then we'll gank up the middle lane too. So let's go diving. Last word goes out. Miracle. Well, they can pop Spike Carapus, and that's basically all. So there's a disarm and the damage. Open wounds and dread. Three hits. That's one. That's two. That's three. And then Spike Carapus, but life still will still take him. Yeah, the rage. Right it's the rage, man. Not going to be able to be stopped by that Spike Carapace. And now another pickoff for them, as we're going to be Dyer's seeing this tier one tower take quite a bit of damage. Attack. Looks like it is going to be going down as the jungle is going to be up here also for the life stealer. It's going to be difficult to kill off the entire thing. That's why you're seeing Yol throw out a couple more abilities. He's trying to get rid of the street waves and the new one that comes in. They just profit. Wow, Biz just Shadow Blade is now up, gets a solo kill. In towards the mid lane, however, Miguel, no Alderman, nice stuns, and Solo's going to take a fall right now. Managed to get one silence off and then just bought back. Mouseport style, Life Striker Ray almost in there. A miracle. Need the purge to start off, but then Dread also with the open wounds possibility. AL fall themselves back. Unicorn takes damage, loses so much of his mana as well. His Elder Dragon form came up, but he had no mana really to use. Well, he had mana to use it, but nothing else. So Roskis now will take the tier one tower in the mid. And that's finally going to be Dyer's happening there, and there's not a whole lot you can do. Invisibility rune going to Miguel now. Also Bane in the top lane trying to just find his level six as well. It's still not there in those team Dyer's fights. The Fiend's grip would have helped so fallen. much, but really, uh -huh. you can't can't find it yet for him. He's just about to hit level six. Two more creeps honestly would be able to be the next next level for him, and yes, he has to TP back now because already looks like Rox is going to be kind of trying to rotate up there. When you have Dread arrive and you instantly cannot remain, it's just no no one can stand up against the Nakes. And now Gyro again. He wants to do it, and Mania stops, smelling the roses, and then basically gets himself killed. Trees will take up a lot of that rocket barrage, however, and then flat cannon. So Trees to go, Mania as well. Very simple initiation. It was. I think Mania was just looking in the shop right there because he was just completely hello, stuck. Solo. Six charges, bottle charge, not gonna be enough. Miguel gonna try and TP out this one, will be successful. At the same time, well, you gank up one lane, we gank up another into Unicorn in the middle lane. Ryze gonna be here, Fiend's Grip is available, but Unicorn getting stunned up while being in his Dragon form. Now there's gonna be wasted time being in that ultimate form. I'm just waiting right now for that nasty combo to come out from Vanscore and Yol to be able to get that maximum level up of the Soul Catcher mixed with the Laguna Blade. That's going to be making it Mir very miracle, difficult. And miracle, miracle, miracle. Vendetta initiation with a profit damage. Could be enough. Needs a Shadow Blade again. He needs to go Invis. He doesn't have the mana for it. 
So they bring him down, but Miracle comes in range of the T1 tower. Mania will TP out. Oh no! He was going to, but now the catcher is out on him. And thus Mania's death, plus the death of Nyx. Double kill comes the way of Dread. And Gyro, well, he was the sacrificial lamb. Unfortunately so. So right now, Roxy is still getting away with so much now. 9 to 4, Radiant's look at that. 4k right now experience as well as 7.5k for that goal. That's just continuously going way too much in favor of Rox. And how is Absolute Legends going to be able to get through with this one? How are they going to be able to survive oh, nice with this? And Miguel! Done, yo! In fast damage! Almost enough to kill off Miguel! If he didn't have that haste rune, it would have been Dread chasing him down. Even with that blink dagger. But throwing that Laguna Blade by Yol, he'll have to go back and pick up some new mana. So he can just spam out what he's at, whatever he's got attack. left right now. Queen of Pain should feel very, very lucky that she survived. Seriously. Up in the top lane now, Unicorn still Radiant's continuing to farm up. Attack. Almost finding that drum of endurance up on him. It's still not quite there yet as we see a bit of a smoke gank here for AL, trying to take out that tier Radiant's one tower up in the top lane, but obviously Roxy is now going to be aware of this as the Vendetta now being used for Miracle. Mm, no sentries, no gems. Shadow Blade from Biz, he wants to scout out and see what's there. Miracle's Vendetta, however, is about to wear off, so now they've lost their initiation, and Miracle is going to use it. Goes on Vanscore. Vanscore, Global Suns, there's no follow through. Unicorn can't get an ultimate form, and Miracle, he's locked in the corner. Last word as well as that Global Suns, so it was a double whammy. Nick's already on the sidelines. Unicorn not feeling happy about life. Rai's already moving out. Mania's trying to split push Radiant's this out. So is Miguel. Miguel's now down attack. the bottom lane trying to do some damage to these tier 1 towers. Because nothing is going to be claimed anywhere else. And then double TP bottom lane. Radiant's middle tower, tower shall no longer be attack. harassed. Now that's going to be Miguel immediately backing off after that one. And just right now, the initiation power of Roxas is absolutely insane, especially with the Lothar's up right now on Buzz. The BKB going to be following up very soon. And that's Radiant's a deny on the tier 1 mid. Has been that it is, ma'am. That it is. Easy TP in. They just promised trees. Couldn't finish off the job. Got killed off too fast by the flat cannon. And welcome to aggressive time for Roxkiss. So they get an aggressive ward inside the dire jungle. See Unicorn as well as Bane both coming in. They see them both also heading down south. So Dread, the choice is do they fight right now? Maybe they do. Dust is out. Fiend's grip out on Biz. They should be able to bring him down pretty damn fast. Yol can't put out any kind of global silence. And then Dread is in the middle of four heroes. The slave doing some decent damage. Yol really looking low as well. Many TPs in. I'm taking him. But Dread, he's just solo killing up against four heroes. Now Vanscore helping him out. Infest damage not enough. Actually, yes, it is. With the poison damage, with the catch, it's going to be enough. And Vanscore keeps himself alive a little bit longer, putting up that disruption. Now moving down, trying to focus on Mania. One Last poison sack giving Dread some space to move. It won't kill him off. Or maybe no poison and urn charge. Maybe he wants to TP back to base just in case. 20 HP he gets to live on. And in the meantime, in the bottom lane, so we'll just grabbing some more experience for that there. Getting some more CS 71 and 12 for him. And just a really, really good team fight there for Absolute Legend. Just kind of bringing it back a little bit more. Though Rock's Kiss was able to kind of just damage him down with Dread. The amount of DPS coming out from him this early on is just a little bit too much for Absolute Legends to handle. Hopefully the Enfeeble right now from Bane. Rai is going to be able to level that up next because that's going to be very, very essential for the rest of his team to try and survive during this. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels weird to see the score still sitting at two for, uh, 12 to 7. As it feels like AL is starting to get control back during fights. A little bit, which, yeah. Which for me doesn't make any kind of sense when you have something like a global, when you have like a global silence from Silencer, <laughs> and the fact that now he's still going to complete up his mech as well. But the fact that Drake could also stand within the entire of AL, like, they kill off what SD. Yeah, it's it's minimal for what they lost. TP down the bottom lane. Miracles at least giving them some good initiation. It's almost making it even better for AL because they're actually Dyer's getting position. They're getting attack. a better position during the team fights. Yeah, and with though. With Solo and his mechanism, he's definitely going to be in that next fight. Because honestly, he wasn't in that previous one. In that previous engagement, would have been really helpful to be able to keep them alive and just deal out some more damage. Stunned by oh. Miracle, Mana Burn as well. Dread, he needs to invest. Couldn't get it off in time. Queen of Pain had enough damage, and that's a lot of gold coming the way of Queen of Pain. 408 for that dominating streak. And Rise, is he really going to try and stop this top tower? It's not really going to work. Miracle, still, Vendetta's on cooldown, so he doesn't have that initiation again. And Viz already puts the rocket on Miracle anyway. Dyer's Hold him away from the tower. Fortification's already gone. And she pulls the creep wave Dyer's away as well. Is under attack. Last hit in the tower goes away at the gyro. Dyer's and that's going to be now 1300 away from full BKB. Very, very close to a Mithril Hammer. Going to be picked up here. 
relatively soon as the bottom lane has been pushed in right now. Going to be looking, there's that recipe for the drum. Going to be picked up on Unicorn fairly late. He was having a tough time, man. He's fat 56, mm -hmm. 56 and four compared to that gyro. Booz right now. A 19 minute drum is what we see. Yeah. At this point, it's like, come on, man. Have that shadow blade by 90 minutes. 19 minutes is what you're searching for. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. Nyx looking to initiate in the middle lane. Y'all just throw out just a, a bit of a fishing slave to help push out the creep wave. It wasn't meant for anything else. And then Miracle gets revealed. It's like, whoa, that guy was actually next to us in Vendetta. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe, maybe worth getting some sentries or maybe a gem up and running. That would probably be good here because each of these team fights have been start off here with Miracle leading the charge with that Vendetta. The stun impale obviously going to follow through. Very, very nice for him. Blizz right now going to be waiting though to be able to get that BKB. I think for the next team fight, Roxkiss is going to be waiting for that one. That's going to be a long time to wait, man. I know. Well, I mean, he's only 400 gold away from it. He does. Yeah, it's 400 gold. Okay. So that's a bit fair. More support gonna come. It really doesn't look like it's 400 gold. It's like, ah, it's too long. Too long for Rash and Dota. Tier 2 Tau, faster way to get a 400 gold. Let's go do there it. There you go. Fantastic. Dying Tier 2 Tau to be brought down. Miracle attack. here again. Vendetta on cooldown for one more second. Miguel's already got a rocket focusing him down. And Miracle, Spike Arrow, take it. Nope, Dying there goes your rage. Miracle goes invis. No sentry wards up. No vision. The Prophet Ottoman also helps just push back Rock's Kiss. Uh, the middle lane, of course, the tower was denied before. And yeah, that's going to be just the tier two left inside of middle lane. The BKB up now for Buzz. Radiance middle there's the recipe. So attack. this next team fight going to be looking very, very strong for Rocks, as I believe most of them are going to be trying to push in that middle lane. And there's just not a whole lot AL is going to be able to do with it. They're going to have to have. Well, honestly, no, they can't really. To be able to defend that tier two, they don't have the proper initiation to do so. They've just got the single target uh, Fiend's Grip here from Rise. Mm hmm. I mean, hopefully you'll be able to get a two-man impale for Miracle, but really, that's just not going to be... It's not going to be it. And it's difficult, because you don't have any kind of, like, setup. Like, you're not looking like a Magnus on your side, which will put RP everybody into an easy stun. Exactly. There's nothing like that. And DK is a single target stun. Yeah. They, they need that Frost Dragon probably more than anything else during these team fights. Have that slow, have that extra extra splash damage. Solo. Oh, Unicorn. Global Silence as well. Not going to be used. Rockets are there, and actually DK can't do anything. He's forced to actually get crippled. But he, he couldn't pop off ulti, he couldn't just let the, the breathe fire, he couldn't throw a Dragon Tail stun. Yeah, yeah. Nothing was near him. And now they do the same kind of thing to Nick. Like Miracle, last word up, there's your Sans and Dread just dives in. Three hits from Dread off the initial attack, and then over to Unicorn. Man, these guys don't even have life points. I don't, yeah, I still don't know why you can't really defend this tier two tower right now. We just see the reasoning for that. And DK, the hero you don't want to be going down, has been taken out as well as the Nyx. So that's going to be a very, very nice pickup for Rox. As they pretty much going to be able to get a pretty safe Roshan. Yep. And they sacrifice so much for it. They are, however, finding that farm for the Queen of Pain's BKB. The Nate just profit already with a Shadow Blade up and running, but. Yol comes up and defends that one, but with Roshan also going to go the way of Dread. He doesn't have that Aegis Immortal up just yet. Bottom We're just going to give it some time. And Buzz is going to be picking up that Aegis now, and as Absolute Legends, you pretty got, you pretty much have one option. You got the split push right now from Furion. Hopefully, Roxas isn't going to be able to notice him like they did in the bottom lane, being able to push it. That's all you've got in this situation, because Roxas now with that Aegis is easily going to be able to kind of take out a Come on, Mania, fight. be a man, and then Blink Dagger. Yeah. Just purchase that as well. <laughs> Only just purchase that. It was attempted. It was at least attempted by me. We gave it a shot. Yep, right now, Biz. Still got so much gold on right now. 2.4. 2.400, honestly. That is so much. BKB full as well. This next team fight, man, it's going to be nasty. All the exterior towers right now down for Absolute Legends. The control is lost. They've got a single ward up there next to the Roshan, but it's already taken. So really, they've kind of just got a turtle up. They've got to be able to defend against this oncoming Roxkiss push that is inevitable here. And it's looking like, yeah, the Desolator is once again going to be coming up right here. Radiance top tower. Well, you knew it'd be there, man. You knew it'd be. All you're looking for is the damage. Damage is nice. Damage is golden. Miracle stealing a haste rune now on the back of a smoke gank. You can see if they can find someone up on the top lane. Van score. He's a man that's too far up. He's got help. Sansa is here as well. And it's require a global Sansa if they want to live through it. It will require one. Miracle will kill him off. They don't. And again, Rise, he's not coming in close. And they've lost their support. 
There's one on bottom lane, there's one in middle lane, there's one back at base. Stun's gonna miss here on Vanscore. Mm -hmm. And this is just a blow and gank here by AL. So all they can do is they split it up. Miguel and Mania pushing bottom lane. Mania still trying to build into that Orc. He's got one Oblivion stuff and that's all. And Dread, well, he wants to attack. Gets stunned up on the way through. But they're moving very, very far. Shadowblade as well for Bids. He's got a lot of extra movement speed. Trying to catch up to Rise. He won't be able to do so. At the same time, T2 Tower goes down the bot. Yeah, they commit a lot to that chase right there and not being able to get anything for it. That's going to be the Tier 2 loss, which is going to be making it difficult to try and get into the base of Absolute Legends. Because really, the Furion, like I said, is going to be able to just split push when you've got everyone committed into that lane, which is going to give them a reason to have to kind of stay back and defend. It's not, not a fun time. All rocks kiss one is blood, man. That's yeah. the reason why they commit so much to the chase. Sans shows himself up on the top lane. And then instantly Mania as well as Miracle. Even Miracle using Vendetta to run away. He does not want to get seen. And this is that kind of situation now where AL, they, they try and find the farm, Roskis turn up, and then they leave. So they, then they try and find farm elsewhere. Just just jump and jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. Back and, and forth, out. they chase, yeah. And they're again once in the top lane now. Also a four step up here for Solo. Hopefully going to be able to go do a nice pick off for that. Propel his teammates into a good disruption here for Vanscore. Very, very nice as well. With that Medallion of Courage, just the amount of damage going to be coming out from Vanscore to be able to Fight! just use with the Laguna Blade is going to be so, so nasty. And inside the bottom lane again, we see Mania just doing what he has to do and take it to that Tier 3. If they weren't doing this right now, there'll probably be no way that uh, the TPs Radiant's would come back from Ross Kiss because they're looking for a trade right now. Tier 3 tower has been beaten down. There's fortification for the dire side. Radiant side's already fortified. In fact, there's your first TP, which was coming back, but it actually stopped. They're going to stay here and commit this one out. Nature's Prophet and Miguel will bring down a tower, but they won't be able to do it at the same speed that Ross Kiss is capable of doing it. That desolate, man. That minus six armor on buildings. Yep. Yeah, able to eat through it. Fiend's Grip now up from Rise. Is there going to be any kind of stop me for this one? Yeah, disruption, call down. Hits on Unicorn as well as on Rise, plus the Medallion of Courage. Not helping Rise out at all. Now to the bottom lane, Queen of Pain throw out the ult, but Yol's already taken a fall. Biz is here too, and now he's trying to hold him off, but there goes Melee Rack, so there's actually a trade-off here. Do lose the Nature's Prophet, but that's a Melee Rax for a Melee Rax. You cannot say that that was actually a really bad trade. Like, you lose profit, you lose Bane. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's fair enough. But at the same time, like, you now have a better map control when you have a Nature's Prophet on your side. Mm -hmm. And by having a Nature's Prophet means split push is like the best thing you can have. And they do it, and they're able to get away with it as well. So that's just an even trade for them there. But they do lose two, unfortunately. That's going to be really, really nice right here for Absolute Legends. Just giving them some form of hope, some opening right there. In that bottom lane. Just put so much more pressure on the Nature's Prophet. He needs to make sure those split pushes work. And then come in for the key time ganking. But everything else needs to be pushing Rock's Kiss to the point where they have to commit and take a, mo a moment like that. They, 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 they went for a trade. That's yeah. all it was. Two heroes pushing the bottom lane. They said, we can push faster. Both teams have fortification. And then all of a sudden, like both melee wrecks also go down. And Mania is going to snipe out the T1 tower if possible. Trying to farm the Crete Wave actually at the same time. Holding them away. But Dual Breath now coming in through the middle lane. Ross Kiss says, well, okay, you want to throw Nature's Prophet up on the top lane? Still another six seconds before he can come back in again. Unicorn called down. Rocket with the Sun as well. And the last word. And Laguna Blade. Then the Global Silence. There's no way for Nature's Prophet to come back. DK will buy himself back into the game. Miguel is at his BKB. Forcing Biz back out again. There's DK spending a lot of money. And Biz, Miracle, Initiation. Biz just turns around, he gets stunned up instantly. Miracle, able to survive. Dread doesn't want to let him though. Comes up, open wounds on Rise. The Rock is chasing that Miracle, won't get a kill though. In fact, he gets picked off on the way through. It kind of looks like Rock's just, they want to keep going in again. It looks like it, and really, there's just not a whole lot now. You do have Unicorn here, though, still ultimate available for him as well. Fiend's Grip also, but that tier three is not looking so healthy. See Yol trying to do the whole blink line strike array on Unicorn. Still buys some space because AL had to fall back for it. Now the DK form is up, stun on Biz. Last word, and the grip goes out in solo. Now there's trouble, but the disruption keeps Biz alive a little bit longer. Then a good call down, perfect call down. And well, Ryze trying to nail himself inside the nightmare. There's a double kill for Biz. Queen of Pain also gonna buy back out in this game.
But this will be a double racing now in favor of Ross Kiss and Blink up looking for the Lion Tracker Ray. Picks it up too, but Yolen raises the tier four tower is going to go down with an Aegis Prophet and almost killing off Biz as well. That's why Miguel was coming in for a secondary scream and Dad Dre's just like, okay, you want to fight? Let's go fight. And in the bottom lane, that is actually going to be the next Rax. Range going to be taken out here on Rox Kiss's side. As the rest of them push in. Solo here now in the middle of nowhere. Needs to four staff. Actually, maybe just needs to kill off Miguel. The Sprout will hold him there. Four staff through it. Now he fights up against Mania. Quick mech charge. Mania wants to chase this one. So does Miguel. And Miguel able to pick it up. Nice little play. They find one small opening. But it, it's still it's still one Rax and a half up against uh, a full Rax on the bottom. That was a bizarre position there, unfortunately, for Solo. Gonna be picked off again. Another 40 seconds on the clock until he comes back in. And now, just gotta get that tier three in the bottom lane. And really, at the 29 minute mark, with two racks down, I mean, that is not extremely bad, especially with how Absolute Legend is still being able to defend this one, but now they're under so much pressure. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to defend against this next coming team fight mm -hmm. because you're going to have everything available right now for Rock's Kiss. The silence, the global silence is going to be available as well. It's just going to be very, very hard for them just to say the least. That's that's all I can say really for that. Mm -hmm. Also, the Reaver are going to be up here for Dread, making it very difficult to take him down. Damn. Butterfly also up for Buzz. Yeah, they they got no way to attack him. They got no way to attack him. DK, what's he building? Like as you said, like BKB. And we got a I BKB mean, you're almost there with the Mithril Hammer, but still the recipe. You got another 1300, so that's just very very tough right now. It's, if you're it's, in it's not even that though. Like they can't hit Gyro. As I know, he, with, with the with the high evasion he's got, them dealing enough damage fast enough to kill him off. It's very, very difficult. Like, Miracle comes in, lets off the sun, they just scream. Quap he can't go off, and now Biz turns around, starts hitting pretty hard there on Miguel, as well as Miracle. So Miracle just pops from that one. And Miguel, he'll blink himself away, deeper inside the trees, looking for a TP out from here. And Yol, well, he could have had a bit of a, a check for it. Man, it's got a little bit late in the Shadow Poison, but they know they're now one hero up. And instantly, Nature's Prophet has to do the, the, uh, the, uh, the two, two heroes up. Um, Mania has to push out the top lane. He has to, but now this is the inevitable push coming out right here. If they take this out, another 17 seconds with the pain, <clears throat> as well as Nyx going to be on the sideline. It's just going to be too late. 31 minutes Radiant's in, and hopefully hopefully attack. Mania is going to be able to push something in here. He also has his Orchid available, so if anyone Dyer's tries to just TP in alone, he's going to be attack. able to take him out. Dyer's structures are fortified. Damn. So AL, all or nothing, guys. All or nothing. Attack. Defend it now, or basically call the GG. Roskis are already one game ahead. Stun to go through Biz. Yes, that mech charge off. Queen of Paint throws out the ult with the Nightmare. We're still up on Vanscore, so we did minimal damage when Rise instantly getting nuked off. Miguel points away to safety. Biz coming a lot of damage there from the Prophet Ultimate. They need a little bit more life from this one. They haven't brought down the tower just yet. Need that mech charge back for 30 seconds. Miguel too close. Stunned. Laguna Blade instantly destroyed. Yol picks up the double kill. Unicorn and Mania still looking for an opening, but the mid lane's pushing in. The top lane's gonna push out as well. Mania, man, a little bit too much damage. DK with a stun, but Blink up, looks for Lightstrike Ray, can't get it, but already that extra damage to Fiery Soul. Not enough to kill off the DK, maybe Solo with that curse. It's not gonna be enough to kill off the DK, not while he's healing up the way he is. But that is gonna be bottom racks. An absolute legends, one range racks, facing up against Mega Creeps then. And then they will call the GG. Even with the Nature's Prophet, there's no way they can really defend against that one. That's what they're going to try this. Blink it from Miracle. One hit, two hit, and then last word, Nightmare. Third hit kills him off. Over to Unicorn. Open wounds him up or purge him up. And they're just going through them all. This is GG. This really is GG. Rise there. And there you go. GG, well played. A valiant effort coming out from Absolute Legends. 29 to 13. At the end of that game, there was just way too much experience going the way right now of Rock's Kiss, as well as economics. There was just not enough damage as well coming out from the Dragon Knight. No BKB up, and when you have to go for the BKB defensively, there's still, it's just, there's no way you're going to be able to do enough damage in the meantime. Luckily, you did have the Freon who was able to pick up that Orchid, which is nice. Yep. But it wasn't in time. Everyone was just having to pick up defensive items right now on the Absolute Legends lineup. 
not enough damage coming out. And at the end of the day, with that butterfly coming out for Gyrocopter, it was just too much for them to handle. Yeah, that it was, man. That it was. Of course, we're going to give big props to Absolute Legends. Yeah. Uh, they actually walk away with 4,000, uh, I believe it's actually Euro, uh, yeah. uh, thanks to uh, Raycall. So big thanks to them for sponsoring the tournament. Uh, and of course, that does also ensure that there's at least $7,000 going the way of Roskiss. And that's the second prize here. Fourth and third get $4,000. And it goes $12,000 for the grand final position. Of mm -hmm. course, who will face up against Roskiss? gets in the grand final. That's what we yeah. get to find up next, man, because Malsports, the guys that brought down, for me, the tournament favorites, yeah. uh, Alliance, will be facing up against Na'Vi. Of course, another best of three. I believe we'll have a short break before we hit to that point. Um, Maus. Maus. Maus versus Na'Vi, not Alliance versus Na'Vi. I say Alliance versus Na'Vi. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Alliance was eliminated by Maus, and it's, yeah, it's Maus versus Na'Vi. That'll be the next best of three coming up, but of course, yep. we don't want to go there without jumping over to Zoe as well as to uh, Pyrian Flax uh, with the captains, but they're not really just just yet. Yep. They're not 100% ready just yet. Uh, so, obviously, man, last thoughts about this game. Last thoughts about, like, the whole, the whole like, best of three when there was two games. It was just, yeah, for Roxas to be able to go two on this one, I thought, we both kind of thought it was going to be more of, like, a two and one, but really just the solid mm. lineup, the draft, the, honestly... The players right now being able to have more of like a roster that's more stable just yep. ended up paying off a lot more in the long run where Absolute Legends, like I said, at the beginning of this cast today had quite a few stand-ins. So just with that. And I would put it down to basically one word and not one phrase really. Yeah. Winning lanes. That's, that's basically it. That's what Ross Seriously. just did perfectly. But hey, let's find out from them personally because right now Zoe as well as Perian Flex are there with the two team captains. Thank you. We do have Yol and Miracle here uh, to uh, talk a little bit about the game, which I saw first of all once more. Congratulations. And uh, still, you guys played well. We enjoyed the games yesterday so much. So thank you so much for being a part of this. It was still very entertaining. The first one went pretty clear in your favor. What do you think they made wrong? Um, we just pick our heroes and put lines. Um, so play our game. It was, I don't know really easy to win against because of our heroes, I think. Okay, so if we look at the second game, I mean, uh, AL made the first blood and the, uh, the kill difference wasn't as big. However, the farm difference became very big. Um, what do you think actually went in your favor? Why do you think this game turned out like that? Solo played well I <laughs> on Silencer. Good globals. <laughs> All right, so what are your thoughts about Silencer in general? Mm, good hero in some cases. Sometimes he's really suits. You know. Well, it did work out this time. So thank you very much, and of course, uh, good luck in your next game. Uh, yeah, thanks, Zoe. I'm here with Miracle from AL. Unlucky man, didn't quite go your way today. Yeah, it's, it happens. We had a bad first game, and our pick second game didn't really work for us. So. Because that first game, you got first blood, but then it just seemed to be like, I mean, at about 17-minute mark, you were down 16-1, trying to get things going, but nothing went going for you. Um, we should have played it more passive and waited for the void ulti. The first initiate we did on the Nikes was pretty bad. We could have just kept farming and got an advantage, but we didn't. And in the second game, it seemed to be a, a bit closer compared to the first game, but you were still behind for most of the game, right? Yeah, we were definitely behind. We couldn't really get anything out of NA and Bane, and they had more items on most here or so. So you just think that was just not your day, or would you, is there something you think you could have done differently? I think their playstyle was really good against us. Like, we really tried to find strategies that would work, and first game we really got a strat that we thought we would do well against them with, but our play wasn't good enough. Okay, well we're sorry to hear that, and obviously you did well yesterday, you did well to get this far, and hopefully we'll see you again soon, right, obviously? Yeah, we will. Okay, great. Zoe? We will. That's a promise, and we take you by that word. <laughs> and we can't wait to actually see more of those teams. And, uh, yeah, once more, I want to uh, quickly... Um remind you that on a raid call in our group 1997 you can actually now have the chance of doing a little Q&A with the players from each of those teams so if you have any questions to uh, someone from Roxkiss or from AL please feel free to join the room and actually ask them there uh, we're gonna be back with the next game after a break <laughs> 